This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. As youngsters, we learn by trial and error the fundamentals of this artful sport. As teenagers, we begin to dream about one day being the hero in a championship game. One game that will be a moment to shine. The College World Series has been the platform for many to shine and prove the dreams can actually come true. These dreams have been lived for 51 consecutive years by 20 teams. Some of the dreams have come true in fairy tale fashion. Now Warren Morris. It's a deep drive down the right field line. That ball is gone. LSU wins the College World Series on a home run by Morris. Today, the Arizona State Sun Devils are seeking the sixth College World Series title in school history. A scrappy group, the Sun Devils have put together a championship run that features all of the fundamentals and a will that has allowed them to be undefeated this year in Omaha. The USC Trojans are pointing toward a record 12th College World Series title. Their road to today's championship game has already featured the dramatics that make this event so special. It's Arizona State versus Southern California to see whose dream will come true today. Welcome everyone to Omaha and the NCAA College World Series as CBS Sports presents an ERA championship series event. The 1998 College World Series championship game. And today playing for the national title it's the Trojans of the University of Southern California with a record of 48 and 17 the number four seed at the College World Series this year against the Arizona State University Sun Devils with a record of 41 and 22 the Sun Devils the number six seed. We've had some cool temperatures in recent days here in Omaha it has warmed up a bit today 66 degrees as we approach game time. The humidity not uncomfortable and a lighter wind than we're accustomed to seeing here at Johnny Rosenblatt Stadium. That'll be welcome news to the pitchers. Hello everyone and welcome inside Johnny Rosenblatt Stadium in Omaha Nebraska where they hope for another record setting crowd for today's championship game. Very difficult to get a ticket here. I'm Sean McDonough. It's great to have you with us for just the third time in College World Series history. We'll have two teams from the same conference playing for the national championship. It also happened last year when LSU met Alabama. But in USC and ASU, we have the two winningest teams in the history of the College World Series. USC has won a record 11 titles. ASU has won five. But it's been a while since either team hoisted a national championship banner. USC's last victory came 20 years ago. Arizona State hasn't won it since 1981. One of them will win the title today. They're certainly familiar with each other. They played six times during the regular season. Each team won three. As a matter of fact, each team swept on its home field. USC winning all three games in Los Angeles. ASU swept three in rather lopsided fashion in Tempe. Let's take a look now at how the two teams got to this point. It was a much easier trail to the championship game for the Arizona State Sun Devils as they needed just three games and they went undefeated through bracket one with victories over Long Beach State, Miami of Florida and Florida State. USC had a much tougher time. The Trojans lost their first game last Saturday to LSU, so they faced elimination in each of their next four games, but they beat Florida, Mississippi State, and then two in a row against the two-time defending champion LSU to make it back to the championship game for the first time since 1995. I'm pleased to be joined on today's telecast by Fred Lynn. Let's head down to the USC dugout. He's standing by with Coach Mike Gillespie. Thanks, John. Coach, uh, you're in here in the championship ball game today. Maybe you can tell us about your starting pitcher, Rick Currier. He's a freshman in a real tough situation. Well, Rick really is an, is an outstanding and exciting freshman. Fred, uh, a guy with a, a live fastball and has command of two different breaking balls, both the slider and the curveball. And he is a guy that's done very well for us, and I think he has a great future, and I think he's ready to step up and have a great day for us. What about the uh, little bit of rivalry between uh, USC and ASU? How does that play a part in today's ball game? Well, Fred, of course, I think as, as we both know why the Arizona State USC series goes back several, several years now and, and two great histories, two great traditions. Uh, the, the, it's been a storied uh, tradition, great players. And so uh, it's, a, it's an intense rivalry of long standing and 
these two teams have gone head to head and, and have really had dog fights against one another. So uh, it, it is a very intense, uh, tough rivalry, but I think one with great mutual respect. Uh, and our guys certainly understand they're in for a, a great battle day against a great team. Thanks, Coach. Good luck in today's ball game. Now with Arizona State, here's Andrea Joyce. All right, Fred, thanks. We are with Sun Devils coach Pat Murphy. Coach, I want to ask you about your pitcher, Ryan Mills. How does he seem to you today? I think he's going to be fine. You know, uh, USC has seen him for the last three years, so they know him pretty well. And Ryan's thrown a lot of pitches lately, but he's a big-time pitcher, and he'll come through in a big-time situation. And I know you're looking for any kind of edge you can find for this game. What about this unusual good luck charm you have in your back pocket? Well, a couple of priest friends of mine that are very special, Father Joe and Father John, uh, were in Jerusalem. Father John Herman picked up this rock in the riverbed that suppose of David is slay Goliath and uh, I've kept it with me ever since and we haven't lost yet so uh, it's a role that suits your team well good luck this afternoon thank you very much all right stay with us folks it is Arizona State against USC for the national championship back in Omaha in a moment to both teams. We welcome you back to Rosenblatt Stadium in Omaha, sold out as usual for the national championship game today between USC and Arizona State. USC, the visiting team, here's the starting lineup for the Trojans. Wes Rachels, the second baseman, leads off. Batting second, the left fielder, Greg Hanoyan. The first baseman, Rob Gore, hits third. The cleanup hitter, the catcher, Eric Munson. Third baseman, Morgan Ensberg, bats fifth. Hitting sixth and playing right field, Brad Ticehurst. The DH is Jason Lane. Jeremy Freitas, the center fielder, bats eighth. And hitting ninth, the shortstop, Seth Davidson. The Sunday of defense looks like this. Dustin DeLuke sets up in left field. Rudy Arguez is in center. Michael Moreno is over in right. Andrew Beinbrink is at third base. Michael Collins is at short. Willie Bloomquist is at second. Jeff Phelps is at first. Doing the catching today is Greg Halverson. And on the mound is Ryan Mills. Mills, a junior from Scottsdale, Arizona. With a record of eight and three in 19 games, he's struck out 139 in 114 and a third innings pitched. And earlier this week, he was the sixth player taken in the entire Major League Baseball draft in the first round by the Minnesota Twins. He's the 21st player out of Arizona State to be selected in the first round of the big league draft. And he's ready to go to work and. What will likely be his final appearance for Arizona State. And Wes Rachels leads off. The senior from Los Angeles hitting 316 with two homers and 29 runs batted in. And he's concluding a terrific career at USC today. First pitch from Mills, a called strike from the home plate umpire Dick Runchy. Rachel's in the top 10 in USC history and walks, hits, stolen bases, and he adds another base hit to his records. Single in the left center field, and Rachel's has good speed at first. Well, we wanted to see if uh, Ryan Mills is going to be able to get the ball inside on right handers early in this ball game. He gets the ball up to West Rachel's, and under normal circumstances with a wooden bat, that's probably a broken bat. But that one just blooped over the head, and that's what happens when you get the ball up in the zone. Those bloops fall in. Greg Hanoi in the batter, hitting 363. He's the second leading hitter on the team behind Eric Munson. 1 0 the count on Hanoi. He's a junior from Huntington Beach. to ball two. Mike Gillespie in his 12th season as head coach at USC back in 1961 he played in the national championship game for the Trojans as the left fielder. Now the count goes to three and all on Hanoyan. USC has two men on with nobody out. We mentioned they 
Lost that heartbreaker last Saturday here on CBS to LSU. Blew a five run lead, lost 12 to 10, so that put them on the brink of elimination in each of the next four games. But they defeated the number one seed, Florida. And then behind today's starting pitcher, Rick Currier, defeated Mississippi State 7 to 1. Then they won back to back games against LSU yesterday and two days ago to eliminate the two time defending national champions. And advance to today's game. Rob Gore, the first baseman, the batter. And he looks at the fifth straight ball thrown by Mills. Sean, this is probably the worst possible start that Ryan Mills could have in this type of a ball game. You're going to have jitters to start this game no matter what. And then they get a squeaker base hit, and then he can't find the, the plate right now. And the Trojan hitters are definitely going to be taking a strike. Gore swings away, and it's a deep drive to left. Deluki at the wall, it's gone. A three run homer by Rob Gore. Well, so much for taking a strike. Trojans come out with an aggressive frame of mind. Looks like a cutter from Ryan Mills gets all of the plate and Gore gets all of this fastball. You see he's on nice balance. He attacks it hits the ball in front of the plate. The wind is blowing a little bit from left to right held this ball up a little bit otherwise it'd been further back into the stands. The home run for Gore his 15th of the season second in the College World Series. USC is not a big home run hitting team relative to LSU and some of the others we've seen here but they have set the school record for home runs this season. Now with 110 Gore junior from Vista California out of Rancho Buena Vista High School was their starting center fielder last year this year moved into first base and was first team all pack 10. And as he has been accepting the congratulations in the Trojan dugout. Pat Murphy, the head coach of Arizona State, visited Ryan Mills at the mound, trying to settle down his pitcher. Now the cleanup hitter, Eric Munson. And they'll pitch very carefully to him. Coach Murphy says that Munson is the best hitter in college baseball. He's the leading hitter for the Trojans at 394 with 16 homers and 56 runs batted in. And he posted those numbers despite missing 19 games this season due to a couple of different injuries. He suffered a freak injury just before the series between these two teams in Los Angeles when a ball bounced out of the batting cage during batting practice actually went under the cage bounced up and hit. Munson in the eye he was standing behind the cage and then he suffered a stress fracture of his right foot later in the season and did not play in the series in Tempe breaking ball missed on one and two two balls and two strikes on Munson Sean even though these teams know each other very well this is the first time Munson has seen Mills and vice versa because of those injuries. And Munson lines one to center, and that's a base hit. So the first four Trojans have reached base, and it's as good a start as Mike Gillespie could have envisioned. One thing about Munson, even against a tough left hander, he doesn't flinch. Shoulder, his right shoulder stays in there. This is a high fastball again, up in his eyes almost. That's a very easy pitch as long as you can get your hands above the ball. Which Munson did in that case. Morgan Ensberg, the third baseman, is the batter, and he took ball one. He's hitting 342 with a team high 21 homers and 68 runs batted in. Bounce down to third. Backhanded by Beinbrink. And Bloomquist turned the double play. Nicely done. Five, four, three. Bind, Brink, Bloom, Quist, and Phelps. And Ryan Mills really needed that. Yeah, this is a pitcher's best friend right here. 
Ensberg chops it down to Beinberg, makes a nice backhanded stab, takes his time, delivers a strike over to Bloomquist, and he turns it over to Phelps at first base in time for the double play. So now two outs and the bases are empty. First ball swinging Brad Ticehurst, the right fielder, and he fouled it out of play to the left. Ticehurst is hitting 305. 17 homers and 52 runs batted in. Three of those home runs and seven of the runs batted in have come here in the College World Series. And he's had a terrific week plus here in Omaha, including the news that he was drafted in the eighth round by the Texas Rangers on Tuesday. He's a junior, Los Alamitos, California, out of Modern Day High School. And he's out on the breaking ball. The first strikeout for Mills gets him out of a difficult first inning. The Trojans lead three to nothing on the home run by Rob Gore after a half inning in Omaha. Arizona State trails three to nothing as the Sun Devils come up for the first time this afternoon. With this lineup, Willie Bloomquist to the second baseman leads off. Rudy Arguez is in center field, batting third, the right fielder Michael Moreno. The cleanup hitter, third baseman Andrew Beinbrink. Jeff Phelps is the first baseman. Dustin DeLuke, the left fielder, bats sixth. Hitting seventh, the DH Casey Myers. Greg Halverson is the catcher. Batting ninth, the shortstop, Michael Collins. And the pitcher for USC is the freshman Rick Currier. The freshman All-American as selected by Collegiate Baseball Magazine this year with his 6-1 record. And the eye popping 97 strikeouts in 70 innings. That's 12 and a half strikeouts per nine. And his first pitch is a strike to the leadoff hitter, Willie Bloomquist, the leading hitter for Arizona State at 420 in his sophomore season. Coach Pat Murphy says Bloomquist has far and away been ASU's MVP this year. He had five hits to tie the College World Series record in the victory over Long Beach State. And he's hitting 533 for the College World Series. He's the team leader in hits, runs scored, stolen bases, triples, and walks. And then he takes the ball down and away. Fred, I would imagine it's a boost to the pitcher Rick Currier to have this three nothing lead to help the freshman relax pitching in the national championship game. Sean the Trojans couldn't have scripted it any better for a freshman. He comes out here with a three nothing lead. He's got to have a big sigh of relief. And he gets the call on the close pitch on the outside corner. So Currier with a strong start a strikeout of ASU's leading hitter. Currier and you're going to see this slider this hard biting slider which Mike Gillespie alluded to earlier in the show. He throws this a lot. He threw it for the first pitch of a game. That's that shows a lot of confidence from a freshman. One out and the base is empty. Three nothing USC bottom of the first. Rudy Arguez is the batter. The Sun Devils center fielder having a terrific college World Series. Batting 500. And that's surprising given that he's hitting just 280 for the year. That's a low batting average in college baseball, but he is delivered here in Omaha. He's a senior from Corona, California, 26 years old. He was out of school for four years, and we'll tell you more about his story as the afternoon goes along. He looks at a ball, two and one. Coach Pat Murphy mentioned the lucky rock that he was given by two friends of his. He's been keeping it in his pocket. Arguez has his hotel room key from Wichita, where Arizona State won its regional, in his back pocket. They played the first game in Wichita and won, and Arguez did well. After the game, he discovered that he still had the key to his room in his uniform pocket, so he's kept it in the pocket for every game since. And you saw a look at the key. The crew doesn't miss anything. Currier 
with back to back strikeouts. So so much for freshman jitters as Arguez goes down after the strikeout of Bloomquist. Sean you know the big legs they would call this easy heat because his his delivery is very slow and you just kind of lulls a hitter to sleep and then he throws that nasty slider down and into a lefty boy that is tough to hit I'm glad I'm not hitting today. And two outs and the base is empty three nothing USC bottom of the first. Michael Moreno with a swing and a miss for strike one. He's at three fifty four for the season 11 homers and 55 runs batted in. Another senior playing in his last game. For Arizona State. Strike two so the freshman courier pitching in the national championship game has a chance to strike out the side in the first inning. Is that a swing. Yes it is and Rick Courier strikes out the side in the first. After one in Omaha the Trojans of Southern California lead three to nothing. Three nothing USC after an inning Sean McDonough with Fred Lynn and somewhere in Rosenblatt Stadium we'll find our friend and colleague Andrea Joyce. Down here in the clubhouse this has been a nerve wracking week for a member of the crew. Jim Bailey is in charge of maintaining the daily supply of baseballs for the College World Series. Now normally he has 60 dozen for the entire series but when the teams hit 36 home runs in the first four days he got a little nervous so he had the NCAA order more balls and it's a good thing Sean they've already gone through 78 dozen. My goodness. <laughs> That's a lot of chickens. Yes indeed. Well, we saw a lot of those balls fly out here last Saturday when LSU and USC combined at 10 home runs. Here's Jason Lane. He hit two out of the ballpark yesterday in helping lead USC to the victory over LSU. As part of a memorable day for Lane, a day he'll never forget. Not only did he hit the two home runs, but late in the ball game he came in to pitch and got the save. Behind a terrific pitching performance by Mike Penny. Last two days, USC received outstanding starting pitching from Seth Etherton and yesterday from Penny. Penny and Lane combining. To be Penny Lane. <laughs> and there's another base hit for Lane. Ringing line drive down the left field line. Played in the corner by DeLuki. And it's an easy double for Lane, Jr. from Sebastopol, California, in Northern California. Well, Lane's done just about everything in the College World Series except for right up the lineup. You see that cut fastball from Mills, and the Trojan right handed hitters know that's where he wants to go with that cut fastball. He wants to set up inside, and that's where he wants to pound him. Lane says, uh uh. One of the few disappointments for Jason Lane has been that his parents aren't able to make the trip to Omaha. Glenn and Pam Lane run a trucking business that has them working a lot of hours in Northern California. They're not here today but they're watching very proud of their son who stands at second base as Jeremy Freitas turned to bunt and then looked at strike one he's hitting 325 14 homers 57 runs batted in. And we saw gorilla ball as it's known last weekend from LSU these two teams will play more traditional college baseball from time to time bunt steal hit and run there's a blast to the gap in for another hit. Lane comes around to the plate. Freitas has a double and it's 4 nothing USC. They are coming after the All-American Ryan Mills with great vigor here in the first two innings. I'll tell you what these left handed hitters from the Trojans they aren't giving an inch. Here's a breaking ball after an 0 1 count and Freitas is trying to get the runner over by advancing the ball to the right side of the diamond blasted into right center. And Jason Lane did a heads up thing. He went back to tag up on this ball just to make sure if one of the outfielders did make the play, he'd get to third base. Ball drops in, he scores. Nightmarish start for Pat Murphy. Seth Davidson, the number nine hitter, squared the bunt. Pitch went past the catcher. 
Halverson couldn't come up with it and apparently it did not strike the bat so on to third goes Freitas. This looks like the, almost the catcher gets crossed up Halverson here. You see the, the hitters already squared around gets out of the way and the ball he just misses it. That ball has a lot of hop to it. You can see the spin he has that's a fastball looks like a slider but he throws it a little bit off center and it cuts so it runs into a right handed hitter. And when you're throwing 92 93 miles an hour and that balls up it's tough to catch. Or well, pass ball. And it's the runner to third and coach Murphy is going to play the infield in already down by four runs with the number nine hitter at the plate. Shortstop Michael Collins hanging back a little bit. But the rest of the infielders are in. With the count one and all. There is already action in the ASU bullpen. That's a big surprise with Mills, the All American, the first round pick who's well rested on the mound. We certainly didn't expect to see Aaron Kramer warming up this early. He is in the bullpen and getting ready for the Sun Devils. Pat Murphy in his fourth year at Arizona State first trip to the College World Series as a head coach for Murphy he came to ASU replaced the legendary Jim Brock who died of cancer very shortly after his emotional trip with the Sun Devils to the College World Series in 1994 and Murphy came from Notre Dame where he took a program that was down and it's six straight. 45 plus win seasons. Davidson back to the mound. It struck Mills. He had a tough time finding it, and Davidson safe. And runner Freitas had to remain at third base. Now that can be frightening for Mills. Earlier in his career, he was hit in the face by a line drive. A tape that's been shown over and over again is an example of just how dangerous aluminum bats can be. Well, you can see any pitcher. I don't care if he's pitching in little league or what have you you have to be in a good fielding position after you let go of the ball especially when we're at college here and we're using these aluminum bats the ball does get back there quickly but you got to be in good position to catch the ball too Sean. Pat Murphy on his way to the mound. He wants to make sure Mills is OK Mills waved away the trainer when he tried to come out to the mound but now Murphy's out there and the trainers coming with him. Ryan Mills making his second appearance in the College World Series and he is rested he worked last Sunday against Miami and had a much easier time through six innings than he's had in an inning plus today against the Hurricanes he allowed just two runs on five hits in six innings struck out six he got the win as Aaron Kramer pitched the final three Arizona State won nine to two. Coach Murphy was a little bit frustrated with just the eight wins when we spoke with him yesterday he said a guy with his talent pitching at this level should have more than eight wins and Ryan admitted when we chatted with him yesterday it has been an up and down season for him. Well he's been a little inconsistent in the strike zone and we saw it so far today every time he's got the ball over the part of the plate he's been hammered. He's coming out of the ball game already. Aaron Kramer the new pitcher when we come back to Omaha. Major surprise here in Omaha as USC has knocked out Arizona State starter Ryan Mills after one inning plus three batters in the second and the Trojans lead four to nothing and the new pitcher for ASU is the senior from Phoenix Aaron Kramer with a record of eight and two and again more strikeouts than innings pitched 79 K's and 70 in the third innings. And he comes into a tough spot runners at first and third and nobody out and he's trying to prevent this from getting away from ASU very early. Meanwhile Matt Murphy has walked down to the bullpen to chat with the bullpen catcher. He might just want to get out of the dugout for a while and change the karma. Top of the order Wes Rachels greets Kramer Rachels took a ball inside he singled in the left center and scored on the Gore three run homer last inning.
Just the third home run of the season for Wes Rachels. And it is seven to nothing in favor of Southern California. You know, Sean, sometimes when a team fights really hard to get to this ball game, as USC has, they've had emotional ball games, tough ball games. You see Rachel's taking that ball. That ball's in off the plate. He brings his hands in really nicely and drives it out of the ball yard. But to make the point, you know, these guys are on a roll. Arizona State, they won three games and sat for a couple of days, practiced, enjoyed the weather here. But USC is on a, an emotional roll. I think both teams came in on a roll but the starting pitching performance of Mills has really deflated his team. And the batter is Greg Hanoyan who walked and scored on the three run homer by Rob Gore last inning. Foul ball off to the left. Ryan Mills pitched one inning today and he allowed six runs all earned on six hits and a walk. He struck out one he threw 26 pitches. Certainly he seems to have a bright future a young man who can throw in the high 90s when he has his best fastball Ryan Mills the son of a former big league pitcher his dad Dick pitched very briefly for the Boston Red Sox his mom is a nutritionist Jenny Mills Coach Murphy was saying Ryan's one of these young men who's really been primed from a very early age to be a top draft pick and a major league pitcher. His dad has worked very closely with him throughout his life. But this is not the way he wanted to, in all likelihood, end his college career. He is a junior, but it seems likely he'll sign with the Twins after being the sixth pick in the draft. Ryan turned down more than a half a million dollars to sign with the Yankees coming out of high school because he wanted to go to college. Now it's Aaron Kramer working to Hanoi and another foul ball. And it certainly has been an interesting history, Fred, between Ryan Mills and the Trojans. There's been a lot of talk about USC and the fact that they try to pick off the signs from the other team's battery. They'll relay information to the hitter quite loudly and animatedly as the hitters at the plate. Mills admitted he was distracted by that the first time he faced USC. There's a change up for strike three and Hanoi is out. But then the last time up against USC Mills struck out 15 so none of that sign picking was a problem. We talked about his up and down season and just his starts against USC are a great indication of that back down today in the biggest game of his college career. So that's the first out of the inning. And here's Rob Gore with the three run homer last inning that got the Trojans off and running very quickly. Sean, sometimes, you know, the after effect of we were talking about the signs and how USC was stealing signs and how it shook him up. You know, and then he blotted it out against uh, USC at his place at ASU in Tempe. But this is a neutral site and he didn't have that home field edge. And maybe uh, he started thinking again. You never know uh, with a young player what he's going to do in a big situation. And well, Mills' uh, dad was particularly critical of USC for the sign picking in an article in. Collegiate Baseball Magazine a few weeks ago. Mike Gillespie, when we talked with him yesterday, said Mr. Mills was the one who seemed to have the biggest issue with it. We should point out we've been told that Dick Mills is not here today. But there is some underlying bad blood between these two teams. They had a major brawl three years ago. There's another drive by Gore. Forget about that one. That's going to land in Lincoln. Second homer in as many innings for Gore. He has now driven in 12 runs in this College World Series to lead all hitters this year. The record is 17 by Stan Holmes of ASU back in 1981. Well, Gore hit a fastball out in the first inning, and it's almost identical location, down and in. A lot of right-handers don't like the ball down and in, especially from right-handed pitchers. They'd rather have it away from them. But these SC hitters are looking for the ball down in there. 
obviously there's some history here. I mean, this is the seventh time they played each other. Everybody knows one another, so it's whoever executes the best is going to win this ball game. And thus far, USC is executing to perfection. Chatted with Mike Gillespie last week about Gore. He said occasional power. Well, been more than occasional today. And Coach Gillespie is delighted that's the case. Two home runs. One in the first inning, one in the second. By Gore, who was drafted by the Los Angeles Dodgers in the 14th round earlier this week. Now Eric Munson, the batter. Occasional power, like occasionally every time he hits. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, on every occasion today. 8 nothing, USC in the second inning. Off speed pitch bounce to second. Bloomquist, two Phelps for the out, two down. It's been an up and down ride for Aaron Kramer since he came into the ball game. He was greeted by the three run homer by Rachels, then he struck out Hanoi, and then Gore hit the solo homer. Now the ground out by Munson. These are the two best ASU has to offer. And their pitching staff and both Mills and Kramer have been roughed up today. There's action again in the bullpen. Ball one down and in. And Morgan Ensberg, the eighth batter of the second inning. He grounded into a 5 4 3 double play in the first, but that inning might have been much worse for Ryan Mills. We thought Gorilla Ball left when LSU was knocked out, but that's not the case. This is a performance even the Tigers could admire. Well, the one difference between LSU and, and USC is that that's just one part of their ball game. Uh, LSU lost this tournament because that's they were one dimensional. That's all they could do. They did it very well. Ensberg hit by the 2-0 pitch. And you don't see. Much of this with intent in college baseball. But you wonder if there was some intent here, given that it's eight to nothing and they've been taking great swings and knocking the ball out of the ballpark with regularity. Well, they're, they're definitely trying to pitch inside. There's no question that every right handed hitter is, is, is being pitched inside. And that one looks like it got a little bit too far inside. 24 batters have been hit in this college World Series. That's a record. Brad Ticehurst, the batter, he was called out on strikes to end the first. And the fouls went back to the screen. Matter of fact, when we talked with Pat Murphy yesterday about the sign stealing that USC does, he said obviously in Major League Baseball, professional baseball, the response would be to drill the hitters, meaning hit them. So in college baseball, we don't want to do that. And Pat Murphy said, I've talked with a lot of people in baseball about how I should deal with it if it happens and it rattles my pitchers again. And 90 percent of the baseball people I talked to said drill the hitters even if it is college baseball. Coach Murphy said they would not play that way. Hot fly and shallow left the shortstop Michael Collins out to make the catch and that ends the inning. But the Trojans batted around and they scored five more. After an inning and a half it's eight nothing USC. Rob Gore of USC has already tied the College World Series championship game record with two home runs. He's the third player to hit two homers in the championship game. Bill Horning of Minnesota did it in 1956, and Mark Kotze of Cal State Fullerton did it in 1995 against USC when the Titans won the national title. Meanwhile, Rick Currier struck out the side in the first inning, and the freshman throws strike one to the cleanup hitter, Andrew Beinbrink. Beinbrink. Led the Pac-10 and runs batted in this year with 82. He takes a ball high. Only one player has ever hit three homers in a game at the College World Series. And that was not in a championship game. That was J.D. Drew of Florida State. Better known these days as the player who's been sitting on the sidelines for quite a while, failing to sign a deal with the Philadelphia Phillies, drafted again this week by St. Louis. But Drew hit three in a game in 95 here against USC. And Gore will have uh, probably several opportunities to tie that record the way this one's going today. Heinbrink takes ball three, three and one.
Wow, you'd think one of our own staff members would put that banner together, but just a good natured fan here in Omaha, as they all seem to be at this event. And Beinbrink walks, so the Sun Devils have their first base runner. Coming up next, third round coverage of the Kemper Open. Fred Funk has sizzled in the first two rounds, already 12 under par, and he owns a three shot lead over three others. The Kemper Open coming up next here on CBS Sports. Jeff Phelps, the first baseman at 344. Steinbrink certainly not likely to be running down by eight. And the carrier through. Ball one to Phelps. Phelps, a freshman from Yuma, Arizona. And he takes a strike. Now, would you imagine Fred down by eight? What's the approach for the hitters? They go up there taking a lot of pitches and making courier throw strikes? Well, that's his MO anyway. He's going to throw a lot of pitches. He gets deep into the count because he's a strikeout pitcher. But you want to take a strike. When you're down, you need base runners. One and two, the count on Phelps. There have been a couple of cool days here, but other than that, the weather has been perfect once again. In Omaha, which next season will host this event for the 50th year, and they're already planning major celebrations. They're going to spend three million more dollars to upgrade this stadium, which is already a terrific facility in the home of the Omaha Royals, the Triple A team of the Kansas City Royals. They're going to add a concourse outside the main gate. Foul ball planning an opening ceremony for next year and all kinds of great festivities and every year when you think they can't do much of a better job hosting the event they find a new wrinkle to make it even a little bit better. You know Sean one nice thing about this ballpark it's really fan friendly you look around here there's really not a bad seat in a house and the people are right on the field that looks like some of the best seats are in the bleachers I mean they look like they're like Wrigley Field I mean they're just right on top of you. is running down by eight it's a base hit in the right field by Phelps. Beinbrink on his way to third as the ball is played by Tice Hurst. And if you've been watching the College World Series you know that no lead is safe. And there's a long way to go in this one and certainly Pat Murphy rolling the dice early he generally wouldn't run down by eight. I mean if you run down by eight you better get to second base standing up. Obviously uh, Courier's not really concerned with buying break over there and he got a great jump. A nice piece of hitting here by Phelps hits behind the runner and then Arizona State's in business here first and third nobody out. Well, that's the first hit for ASU USC leads eight to nothing. But still just the bottom of the second here's Dustin DeLuki. Hitting 223. And he's been much better. The College World Series another example of a guy who has stepped up in the bright spotlight here in Omaha. He's at 417 in the three games here, five for 12, including a double. Looking for his first run batted in of the College World Series. 2 and 0 to count. Andrew Beinbrink is the runner at third base. And at first, Jeff Phelps, nobody out. DeLuke's a sophomore from Burlingame, California. And that's California, a bit laid back, and Coach Murphy's been telling him he wants DeLuke to play more like Pete Rose. And Murphy said, maybe I made a coaching mistake in stressing that to Dustin because he just doesn't seem to have the personality to play that way, but he is a gamer and has come through lately. Well there aren't too many guys that play baseball like Pete Rose that I am aware of but uh, that's certainly a, a lofty aspiration and uh, he's doing it in the College World Series. Megan Bunt makes contact. And he slices that one foul. 
And Murphy is taking a chance a bit with DeLuki. Coach Murphy said yesterday we have players on the bench who are more talented than Dustin DeLuki, but we just have confidence in him in the big game situations. Sean, I think we should point out that ASU did score 24 runs against USC earlier in the season, so they know that they can score against this pitching staff. And that was in a game started by Rick Currier. The foul ball. Many of the Trojans referred to that three game series in ASU as the low point of the season. They lost three games to the Sun Devils by a combined score of 49 to 12. And at the time they were playing without Greg Hanoi and they were playing without their top two catchers. Delugi chops at the second. They'll try to turn two. Davidson the first. Not in time. And a run scores. Beinbrink across the plate to make it eight to one as Delugi picks up his first run batted into the College World Series. Well this is what uh, Courier had in mind here get the ball on the ground let's get some outs here with this kind of uh, lead that he has Rachel's makes a nice feed to Davidson off balance throw boy he, he showed some kind of arm right there he had no feet under him and he just gunned it over to first base it's, it's a little bit better to take the extra step set yourself and then throw the ball so you don't make a, 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 a wild throw to first Davidson has demonstrated a terrific arm in this College World Series. Now Casey Myers another freshman has had a fine year. Go to first to keep an eye on DeLuki. Myers is the second leading hitter on their team. 374. Has been struggling a bit lately. Coach Murphy said through most of the year Myers was clearly their best hitter. And he's had some back stiffness lately hasn't hit as well. Now Coach Murphy thinks it could be a mental thing but he's had some good days of batting practice the last couple of days and he's in there today. He wasn't a certainty to be in the starting lineup as of yesterday. Rolls it sharply foul. One ball and one strike. Back to first. He has two stolen bases, has been thrown out twice trying to steal. The 1 1 from Rick Terrier swung on and missed. Myers, an outstanding student. Arrived this year at ASU already with 27 college credits as a result of what he did in high school. He missed one question on the SAT. That's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure it drives him nuts. Check swing, and that'll be a blue hit. The break for the Sun Devils, and they can use as many of those as they can muster. Check swing, base hit. You see how far the ball goes on a check swing off the aluminum bat. That landed an almost mid range center field. It was a check swing, but from up here, it sounded like a full swing. Whack! Well placed. And right now, this is what ASU needs. They need a few breaks. That's a good pitch from Courier. Down and away slider. Myers just trying to protect the plate. Dunks it into center field. Two men on and one out. Greg Halverson will be the next hitter. And he'll wait as pitching coach John Savage goes to the mound. Savage calls the pitches for the battery. Some of the veteran pitchers on the staff will occasionally shake off a Courier's a freshman. We asked him yesterday about shaking off the pitch called from the dugout. He says, I never shake it off. <laughs> Just doesn't want to risk incurring the wrath of Savage or Gillespie if something goes wrong. Yeah, that's usually a, a reserve for senior pitchers. Uh, the ability to shake off a coach when you're a freshman, you get the sign, you say yes, sir. That's what I'm throwing. 
The ERA Championship Series continues tomorrow at 1 Eastern time as the nation's top athletes look to shatter the record books at the NCAA Outdoor Track and Field Championships. That's tomorrow at 1. The ERA Championship Series on CBS Sports. A chance for ASU to get back into the game quickly. Down 8 to 1, but with two men on. And the ball down and into Halverson. Playing for the championship today. Neither coach is going to linger too long with a pitcher who starts to struggle. We certainly have seen that in the case of Arizona State. And Mike Gillespie has Jason Lane warming up in the Southern California bullpen. Halverson takes a strike. Halverson not the full time catcher he's divided the chores behind the plate with Jeremy Jones Jones actually started more games behind the plate. <laughs> Halverson lines it to left and it falls in front of Hanoyan. He tried to dig the runners but could not and the bases are loaded. That's a couple of bloop hits look like a ball that might be caught Fred but Hanoyan's had a hamstring problem. That caused him to leave the game yesterday in the late innings. You wonder if he was reluctant to really charge hard because of the bad leg. Well, that's a real good point, Sean. You can see the ball out over the plate, and, and Halverson's six foot four. That's just where he wants it. And again, the wind is blowing a little bit left to right. So anything hit to left field softly is going to die quickly. And you made a great point. He does have a hamstring pull, and the last thing you need to do when you have a hammy is the initial quick start. Well, the bases are loaded in the bottom part of the order. The guys with lower batting averages than we're accustomed to seeing in college baseball are getting the job done for the Sun Devils. Here's the number nine hitter, Michael Collins. Infield at double play depth, creeping in at the corners. Collins takes a strike. That was borderline at best. Collins, a junior from Phoenix, is hitting 284. But he's at 308 here at the College World Series. Outfield plays him around to right. Check swing. They appeal to the first base umpire. <laughs> Wade Ford said it was not a swing. One and one the count. Here's a check swing attempt by Collins. You can see that's a good call. And the umpires are here on merit. This will be the 25th pitch of the inning for Courier, who breezed through the first, striking out the side. That's up and away. Two balls and one strike. Bases full of Sun Devils. Runner at third, Dustin Taluki. At second, Casey Myers. And at first, Greg Halverson. Collins just one hit and seven tries with the bases full this season. Mike Gillespie said yesterday that Collins is a very underrated college player. He thinks he's the Sun Devils unsung hero. He drives that to deep left. Way back and gone! A grand slam by the underrated Michael Collins. Side corner and he came inside and all of the home runs we've seen today thus far are that on the inner half of the plate and he cleared those hips and he got just enough of it to get out of here and we got a new, brand new ball game well, partner it shouldn't come as any surprise to those who follow the College World Series this is typical eight to five in the second inning still just one out. Lee Bloomquist, the leadoff hitter with a swing and a miss. He was called out on strikes in the first inning. Well, Michael Gillespie yesterday turned out to be somewhat of a prophet. He was raving about Michael Collins, who doesn't receive a lot of attention when you talk about ASU. Collins hits the big grand slam. 
And all of a sudden it's come apart for Courier here in the second. Bloomquist with a base hit. Courier's given up five hits in the inning, and now he's in danger of getting the quick hook, as did his opposite number, Ryan Mills. Really, this is the only ball that's been hit fairly hard, other than Collins. Everything else has been blooped, dinked, and dorked, but you know what they say, two bloops and a blast, and you're back in the ball game. And it certainly wasn't a loud rally until the homer, but it's enough to knock out Courier. Jason Lane, the new pitcher. Arizona State climbing right back into it in Omaha. It was a tale of two innings for the freshman Rick Courier. He struck out the side in the bottom of the first, but here in the second, he was touched up for five runs and five hits, including the grand slam by Michael Collins. The leadoff walk in this inning hurt Courier. And here's Jason Lane. With a record of eight and two in 33 games, the RA of 5.55. He is the DH, and now he's the pitcher as well. And here's Rudy Arguez, who struck out swinging in the first against Courier. Batting with Bloomquist, an excellent base runner at first. And one out. Lane's first pitch, a ball high. Thirty three steals to lead the team for Bloomquist. And there's a ball two and oh Lane pitched yesterday. Worked an inning in the third without allowing a hit or a run or a walk. He struck out two and finishing off LSU. Combining with Mike Penny. On the victory he was not credited with a save. He missed inside and it's three and oh and Fred. We're into each bullpen early, but USC is the team that really couldn't afford to have that happen with their pitching staff already chewed up because they've had to play two more games here than ASU. Yeah, Sean and, and Etherton and Penny are not available at all for this ball game. And those are their two best starters. And you don't have that many starters in college baseball that you would call quality pitchers. So this is not the scenario that they want, that's for sure. And somebody's going to have to throw some innings out there. Here's Mike Penny who was terrific yesterday in the middle of the three players you see. But Mike Gillespie's hope was that he could get through this game using just three pitchers. He wanted to get Courier into the second half of the game. That was the goal for the starter. Then use Lane and their great closer Jack Krofcheck. But it seems unlikely he'll be able to use just three today given the work that Lane and Krofcheck have had to do here at the College World Series. Michael Moreno struck out to end the first. Now he's up with men at first and second after the walk to Arguez. And Moreno is the tying run at the plate. Well, Sean, right now that with a score eight to five, it's brought everything back into the game. Stealing, hitting, running, bunts. Everything's back. I'm not sure it was ever out though since Coach Murphy had the runner going at the beginning of the inning. The score eight to nothing. Big rip by Moreno. He has home run power with 11. To tie it with one swing. I think the point you made earlier was a terrific one, Fred, about the Sun Devils and their knowledge of Courier. When Courier faced them earlier this season on April 11th, they roughed him around in two innings. Rick gave up six earned runs, got knocked out of the ballgame. USC went on to suffer the worst loss in the history of the program, 24 to 4. And that was the last game played between these two teams. So perhaps that memory has lingered. Well, as you say, you have to feel for Courier because it really wasn't like he was getting rocked all over the ballpark as Mills was. But you, you made a, a, an equally good point. You can't walk the leadoff hitter in that inning, you know, eight nothing. You throw strikes, throw it right down the middle, let him hit a home run. But you can't walk, guys. Now Moreno is the ninth batter of the inning. They've batted around, still just one out. One two pitch is high. Moreno, a senior from Mesa, Arizona, out of Mesa High School, riding a 14-game hitting streak. His high school also 
produced Mickey Hatcher who went on to have a fine major league career. He was known as a fun loving character when he played major league baseball. He played pretty loose. Moreno just exactly the opposite. He's very intense. Known for occasionally getting in the face of teammates when he feels it's necessary. He lines at the center. Jeremy Freitas the catch. Bloomquist back to tag up and he takes third. First and third and two down. The man who started the inning, Andrew Beinbrink. He drew a walk and scored in the first run of the inning. Lane trying to end the ASU rally here in the second. It was 8 0 USC after an inning and a half, but Arizona State has scored five times here in the second. John, these ASU hitters are going up there with a very aggressive attitude right now. Really behoove Lane to start throwing a few of those change-ups. And he's got a good one. He really turns it over to right-hand hitters. And you, you need to let these guys think about something else besides fastball, breaking ball, everything hard. Fastball, curveball, change, the repertoire of Lane. Best pitch change up. 2-0 the count on Vinebrink. 29 two out RBIs to lead the team and a chance for more here. He's also tied with Moreno for the team lead in homers with 11. They have only two players in double figures in homers. Both of them have 11. There's 54 homers for the year for ASU. 11 of them belong to Beinbrink, the league leader in runs batted in. Anytime you see a guy with that many RBIs with that few home runs. He gets a lot of two out hits. I mean, he's moving the ball around the yard a lot. And he likes to hit with men in scoring position. One negative for Beinbrink offensively a very long swing tends to strike out with regularity. And he takes ball four as Lane missed down and away. And now the tying run is aboard. And the Sun Devils could take the lead with one swing, as unlikely as that seemed about 15 minutes ago. Runner at third is Willie Bloomquist. At second, Rudy Arguez. And at first, Andrew Beinbrink, who's now walked for the second time in the inning. I mentioned the great rivalry, and they're certainly familiar with each other. It's been one sided when they've met in the College World Series championship game. It's happened three times prior to this year, all in the 70s, and all three won by the University of Southern California. And they meet in the championship game for the fourth time. And that's the most meetings between the same two teams. I mentioned at the top of the telecast, it's the third time we've had two teams from the same conference. Last year, LSU and Alabama. Back in 88, Stanford beat Arizona State. The times have changed Fred you were part of the rivalry back in the early 70s when these two programs were dominant in college baseball but back then they had all kinds of scholarships they used them other schools didn't now everybody has the same number of scholarships we look at Mike Weibling in the bullpen 11.7 so that spreads out the talent it's much harder to dominate than it was back 20 years or so ago when these two schools did that. It's really hard to dominate when your tuition at your school, your university is pretty high and maybe somebody else isn't. You know, kids can't afford to go there if you can't give them a full ride. They just can't do it, so they go somewhere else. Lane missed with ball one to Jeff Phelps. Phelps had that hit and run single earlier in the inning. Center, the breeze blowing toward right takes it in that direction, and the catch is made by Freitas on the warning track. Now the Sun Devils are right back in it, thanks in large part to the grand slam by Michael Collins. It's eight to five USC after two. Now 
Warren Morris. It's a deep drive down the right field line. That ball is gone! LSU wins the College World Series on a home run by Morris! I was as surprised as anybody when it went over the fence. You know, I'm jumping up and down. I couldn't believe it. And, uh, you know, that's what you play sports for right there, that moment, because, you know, your teammates rush you at home plate. I'm on the bottom of that pile, you know, trying to gasp for air, but it was, you know, it's the, the most uh, exhilarating experience. It, it's, it's a rush you can't match. No matter how many times you see that clip, Fred, it is an experience we share with Warren Morris. Just to imagine what that must have been like for him, his team down by a run heading into the bottom of the ninth. He had not hit a home run all year due to hand and wrist injuries that really prevented him from turning on the ball and he lined one over the fence a two run homer to give them a one run victory over Miami. LSU back in 1996 was 21 and 0 and they had Warren Morris in the starting lineup. He's now playing double A ball for the Tulsa Drillers in the Texas Rangers organization. But that was the most dramatic finish in the history of the College World Series. The first time it ended on a home run. Perhaps we'll have a similar finish today. Jason Lane's pop up caught by the second baseman Willie Bloomquist. And Lane is now the pitcher. He started as the DH. And he's now one for two. And the next batter is Jeremy Freitas, and he is one of our academic all-stars today. The academic all-stars recognize one player on each team for academic excellence. Freitas and Willie Bloomquist are today's selection. Freitas at the plate, a senior psychology major, a 3.2. Grade point average. Bloomquist, a sophomore business major, at 3.4. Freitas looked at strike one. You gotta like Bloomquist because they got Casey Myers over there missed one one question on the SAT. So Bloomquist must be <laughs> he must be pretty sharp. Yes, indeed. In addition to being a terrific college baseball player. Well, Freitas is. Won a number of honors this year. Honorable mention All Pac 10 as an outfielder. We mentioned the note last week, but if you didn't see the telecast, he was named to the 1998 All American Farm Team by Successful Farming Magazine. That's chopped to short. Michael Collins from shallow left to throw off the bag, and Freitas is safe. Tough play for Collins. It was a slow chopper. It sent him onto the outfield grass. Well, you can see where Michael Collins is playing initially. He's already on the on the grass. I mean, he's playing too deep. When I mean, he gets this ball right now, there aren't many people in this world that can make a throw from that position and get somebody. And Freitas doesn't run very well, but he's just playing too doggone deep. I know the ball gets to you in a hurry, but you got to shorten up about five or six steps there because every play is a tough play when you're that far back. It's been scored a hit. Freitas is two for two. That's the third hit given up by Aaron Kramer, the reliever, who misses up and in. To Seth Davidson. Davidson, the freshman from San Diego, had an infield hit, comebacker that struck the pitcher Mills. And Davidson came around to score in the second inning. The runner goes, it's chopped up the middle. Bloomquist has to go to first. And he goes there for the out. And Freitas is a race four to six, and Davidson is safe on the fielder's choice. Little hit and run baseball here by the Trojans. You can see that Freitas is picking up the hitter because it's definitely hit and run. You never do that if you're on a straight steal. He wanted to see where the ball was going. Bloomquist, Bloomquist catches the ball and he only has one play to first, so the Trojans have another runner in scoring position. That's Freitas at second. Davidson out. Assumed Freitas was going to be out for the six. Misspoke, obviously. He's at second base. Davidson out four to three, and the batter is West Rachels, who singled and scored in the first and hit a three run homer in the second. Only six career home runs for Rachel's a senior so that home run is a rarity two of the six hit at the College World Series. He also had one the last time the Trojans were here in 95. Eight five USC leads in the third they scored in each of the first two innings. 
trying to make it three innings in a row with a run. Freitas, we mentioned his selection to the All American Farm Team as chosen by Successful Farming Magazine. That's an honor that goes to athletes who have a farming background. Freitas's family has a cotton farm near Fresno in Hanford, California. And Jeremy was named the team captain of the magazine's baseball squad. They chose a half dozen or so players. It resulted in a donation of $1,000 to USC. So it's an interesting team, but USC is happy to have the money. Yeah, you bet. You know, I, I don't remember seeing that class when I was at USC. I, I, I missed that one. Otherwise, I'd probably take him in farming. I'm sure he doesn't get ripped by his uh, fellow teammates about that. Well, he's just so happy to be back playing back in 1993. Jeremy Freitas severely broke his arm in a dune buggy accident. Doctors told him he'd never play again. Here he is five years later in the championship game. Rachel's with a big hit to center field. Freitas waved around third. Arguez with a throw to the plate. That is too high. And it's 9 to 5 Southern California. And the high throw allowed Rachel's to get into second base. Boy, Wes Rachel's loves playing in the College World Series. He dazzled the last time he was here, and he's doing it again. There's a good pitch, that knuckle curve from Kramer. Takes it right up the gap. Rudy Arguez here has no chance at, at, the, at the plate here. Be better served hitting the cutoff man and keeping the runner from getting into scoring position. But this is all brought on by the hit and run. Got a hit and run. It was a double play grounder. Now they don't get two, and the Trojans get another run. Rachel's is three for three with two singles in the homer. Greg Hanoyan fouls one off to the left. USC has 10 hits already. Nine runs, 10 hits for Southern California. Five runs, five hits for Arizona State. Hanoyan walked and scored on the three run homer by Rob Gore in the first inning. He struck out swinging against Aaron Kramer, the reliever, who's still on the mound in the second. <laughs> Annoyan sends that down the left field line and the catch is made in fair territory by Dustin DeLuke. One run in the third for USC. It's nine to five Trojans heading the home half of the third in Omaha. Back in Omaha bottom of the third nine five USC and we are sitting in the stands right now with former Major League All Star Bob Horner who was also a member of the 1977 USC National Championship team. You drove what 10 hours last night from Texas just to be here. You're getting your money's worth. Well my wife and my oldest boy were in uh, on vacation just come back in town and they made it to the finals and I wanted to be here and the flights schedule coming into Omaha was nuts so we just decided to drive. Now we noticed earlier that you are not wearing your national championship ring. Why don't you tell everybody what you did with it? Well, last night there was a little reception at the hotel and uh, uh, Coach Murphy a little nervous, you know, as would be expected. And uh, and I had my ASU uh, national championship ring and uh, I took it off and I gave it to him and I said, just as kind of a good luck token. It says uh, ASU 2, USC 1. I thought that was kind of an omen. So uh, hopefully we'll pull it out today. And you think he might have been rubbing the finish off of it in that last inning? Well, I hope so. I know he's glad they put a five spot up there. All right. Thanks so much. Back to you, Sean. Well, it certainly won't be two to one today. And I wonder if Coach Murphy's going to run out of pockets for all the good luck charms. Andrea told us about the lucky rock earlier. Now he has Bob Horner's ring. Dustin DeLuke, the leadoff hitter here in the third for ASU. Two balls and a strike to count. Dustin reached on a fielder's choice, knocked in a run. Last inning and scored one of the five. Jason Lane missed inside. Three balls and one strike. Lane came in last inning, was not charged with any of the runs. He did walk to. He got the final two outs of the inning. Rick Currier, the starter, went an inning and a third, and he allowed all five runs on five hits. He walked one, struck out three. Currier threw 43 pitches in an inning and a third. The 3 2 to DeLuke, chopped to second. Rachel's on the move. Got him by a running step. After the game, touch base with CBS Sportsline for a complete wrap up of the College World Series. Plus, check out the National Collegiate Baseball Writers Association Super Team and Player of the Year. It's all at cbs.sportsline.com. Right. 
One out. The batter is Casey Myers. Who singled and scored on the Collins Grand Slam last inning. His dad Clint played at ASU. You remembered Clint Myers. Yeah, I played against Clint a lot. Uh, he was a very fine catcher for ASU. Back in the early 70s, he also wore the number 22. In fact, I think his son has inherited his dad's speed on the bases. As a matter of fact, Coach Murphy said yesterday, Casey Myers is the slowest human being. <laughs> He is actually concerned that Myers could get thrown out at first base on a hit to right field. But he can hit. The one two from Jason Lane is a fastball outside. Myers, a first team freshman All American. He takes ball three low, the off speed pitch. That's ripped to left, a base hit. And with as slow as Coach Murphy described him, you'd expect Casey to be about halfway to first right now, but he is at first base safely on a single to left with one out. Sean, you know what I've noticed so, so far is you see the 3 2 pitch and he gets a fastball and he hammers it. That no one is fooling anybody out here. I mean, these two teams know each other. It's like an inter squad game. And Lane's changeup is really ineffective because the Arizona State players know. About it, and they're not swinging at it. They're just waiting for the fastball to get up there, and then they're whacking at that. Greg Halverson took a strike. Halverson singled and scored on the Collins Grand Slam last inning. 9 5, Southern California in the third. Check swing, and it's a ball. We wonder how long Lane will be able to go. This is the sixth game of the College World Series for USC, and Lane has appeared in four of them, including yesterday's game. They do have a right hander, Steve Immel, warming up in their bullpen. On the inside corner, strike two. Plus, John, he's the everyday DH, so even though he's DH and yes, he, well, that's not expending a lot of energy, but mental energy it is. And uh, going back and forth and back and forth, that, that's tough on a player. Swing and a miss. And Halverson strikes out for the second out of the inning. That's the first strikeout of this outing for Jason Lane. Here you see a little bit of a breaking ball from Lane. Halverson, that's a pitch he hit for a base hit. His first time up, out and away from him, but this one drops down and into him. Swings right over the top. Very tough for a big man to recoil or bring his hands in to handle that down and in breaking ball from the left hander. Two outs, a runner at first for Collins. He hits that to left field. Didn't quite get all of it this time. He's now one for two after his grand slam last inning. So the game is settling down a little bit after three innings, still nine to five, Southern California. Rob Gore will begin the fourth inning for USC. He has already hit two home runs today to tie the championship game record at the College World Series. In the first inning, he hit a three run homer off the starter, Ryan Mills. And in the second inning, he hit a solo shot over everything and left. Off reliever Aaron Kramer. He's two for two with two homers and four runs batted in. And a chance to set a championship game record with another home run. He takes a strike. Gore, Eric Munson, Morgan Ensberg. Hitters three, four, and five against Kramer. Kramer's pitched two innings of relief. And have given up three runs. One and one the count. Kramer is a senior, but this is his first year at Arizona State. 
little dribbler off the end of the bat. It spins foul. Kramer spent two years in junior college. And then transferred to Grand Canyon University not far from Arizona State. He suffered an abdominal injury there in 1996. It was not properly diagnosed. They told him it was a strain but it never got any better. 13 months went by he couldn't pitch. Finally it was correctly diagnosed and he had double hernia surgery. In May of last year. In all he was out of baseball for 20 months. During that time that he was away he finished up all of his coursework and graduated from Grand Canyon University but he still had baseball eligibility left. So when he got healthy this winter he approached Pat Murphy about trying out for the team saying that he would go to ASU as a grad student. Coach Murphy worked him out was very impressed by what he saw. And Kramer joined the season just as it was getting underway in January. And he's become a stalwart out of the bullpen. Last week he was drafted in the 18th round by the San Diego Padres. That's a great story. You know, you just you love a kid like that. He just never gives up. You know, just keeps on chugging and now he gets drafted by a big league club. And he's graduated to boot. So, you know, he's he's got it all going for him right now. As a coach, that's the kind of story you dream about. A guy with that kind of talent just walking in saying he wants to play. Bounce to second. Bloomquist to Phelps for the out. So they finally retire Gore and get him to keep it in the ballpark. One out in the top of the fourth, nine to five USC. Eric Munson singled in the first, grounded out in the second, one for two. A sophomore from San Diego. Well hit to left. Galuki makes the catch right in front of the wall. And the Breeze boy across the field from left to right. Served to knock that ball down a little bit on another day here, the typical day with the breeze blowing straight out. That ball's probably out of here. Yeah, Sean, that's a great point because when a left hander hits a ball to left field, the ball's always going to spin towards the line. And when the wind's blowing the opposite direction, it's going to knock it straight down. And those are the kind of things you have to know when you play the outfield. You check the wind conditions almost on a pitch by pitch basis at this park. Morgan Ensberg pulled the first one foul. He bounced into a double play in the first and was hit by a pitch in the second. And he's trying to make it two national championships in his family this year. His brother Larson plays soccer at UCLA. He played on their national championship team. Morgan regularly heads over to the UCLA campus to watch his brother play soccer. Ensberg has started every game at third base for USC over the last two seasons. In the hole here, 0 and 2. Kramer missed low and away. And he's had big performances in their wins against ASU in Los Angeles and struggled in the three game series when the entire team struggled at ASU when they lost all three. He rips that to deep left, but it's hooking foul. Sean if that graphic is any indication I'm looking for ASU to score some more runs because he doesn't have any hits yet. Well he spanks this ball here. You don't want to get the ball inside with him. You can see that he's choking up. Not many college hitters choke up anymore when there's two strikes but he does to protect the plate. Another chopper foul. Hensburg the team leader in homers. With 21, I mentioned that this year the Trojans have hit a school record 112 home runs, shattering the old mark of 85 back in 1984. And USC has six players in double figures in homers this year. No other Trojan team ever had more than three players with double digit home runs. And you're talking about a school that has had great hitters. 38 first team All Americans, more than 70 players have gone on to the big leagues out of USC, including Fred Lynn. Ron Fairley, Mark McGuire, the subject of home runs, Brett Boone, Jeff Cirillo, great pitchers like Randy Johnson and Tom Seaver. 
Three and two the count. I really like the way Kramer is working Ensberg. You know Kramer's starting to settle down here. He's moving the ball in and out. He's not staying in one particular spot now and he's making these Trojan hitters guess with him. Kramer trying for a one two three inning. Now that's a rarity. At the College World Series. Payoff pitch to Ensberg, another chopper. That's a fair ball right over the bag. Beinbrink. Nice play. Good play by Beinbrink and a good stretch at the other end by Phelps. And it is a one, two, three inning. They head to the bottom of the fourth in Omaha. ASU comes to bat, trailing by four runs. It's a four run lead for USC in the bottom of the fourth. Let's rejoin Andrea Joyce. Welcome to Dingerville, population 14. This makeshift RV community pops up every year during the College World Series, but this is not your typical RV town. They have a mayor, a chaplain, even a security force, and it carries an awful lot of political clout around here. Among those stopping by for lunch this week, Omaha Mayor Hal Dobb. And Sean, this is your kind of town. All they do here is talk baseball. <laughs> and they have a great time every year at the College World Series. Look like a fun group. Bloomquist a butt. Barehanded by Munson. A nice play. That ball had a lot of spin as it tried to bounce back toward the plate. Munson fielded it cleanly with the bare hand and got the speedy runner Bloomquist for the first out. That's exactly right, Sean. If he lets this ball bounce with that spin, that has backspin like a, a nine iron into a hundred yard shot. You can see that he pops out of there, grips it on a, on a good hop, and makes a strong throw. That ball hits, it's going to spin right back, and then it's going to be a tough play. Lundquist now one for three. Jason Lane missed high to Rudy Arguez. Arguez is struck out and walked. The strikeout against the starter, Rick Currier, the walk against Lane. Lane's in one time through the batting order now and has allowed just one hit. He's in with a strike, one and one. And it was big for him to get Bloomquist. Mike Gillespie said yesterday a key to this game is to keep Bloomquist off base. He's really a catalyst for the ASU offense. Two balls and a strike now on Arguez. I mentioned earlier he's a 26 year old senior and with a very touching story. He slaps it to short. It's bobbled and safe at first is Arguez on a error by Davidson. First error of the ball game by either team. Well you don't see this very often from Seth Davidson. Normally a sure handed shortstop. Gets down. He's in good position. Looks like he just took his eye off it at the last second. Anticipating the throw to first. Comes up on him. Doesn't make the play. You don't see that very often from him. He's in good position. Ball hits his bare hand instead of the back of his glove. So the error has Arguez at first. Moreno takes the ball high and a quick throw by Munson down the first. And Arguez is back. Out of high school in Corona, California, Rudy Arguez went to Riverside Community College in California. While he was there, his grandmother became ill. His grandmother and grandfather raised him after his parents were divorced about 10 years earlier. Grandmother, when she became ill, lost her job. So Rudy had to leave community college to go to work and support his family. He was out of school for four years. Started out initially working in a rock quarry near Santa Ana California where he would spent 10 hours a day in a small dark tunnel chipping away at rocks and throwing them onto a conveyor belt. While he was doing that job he got married to his high school sweetheart Michelle in 1992. And two months before she was to deliver their first child Rudy the third is now five years old. Rudy was one of 31 people laid off from the job at the rock quarry. You can imagine what he was experiencing needing to support a growing family and out of work. So he took a job in a corrugated box factory. So he throw 100 pound pallets of cardboard around while doing that he injured his back. And he was out of work again. And he and Michelle decided that the best hope for their future was if he got back to college and got an education. So he talked the coach of Riverside into letting him come back, but 
He had a tryout for the team. 300 players tried out. The initial tryout, he was the 85th player out of 85 who survived that cut. Then when they cut it down to 50 to make the team, he was the 50th player. He was rusty after being out for four years. Wasn't even traveling with the varsity when he first started out at Riverside. 2 2 pitch popped up in foul ground. Gore over, can't get it. The coach at Riverside said Arguez won him over again when Rudy drove two hours to a game to see the varsity team play. When he wasn't even playing, he just wanted to go down and take notes and observe and see how things were going for the big team. One of the players got hurt. Arguez had his uniform with him, put it on, went out and played, was in the lineup ever since, and then wound up transferring back to Arizona State. And here he is, a senior. And he had tears in his eyes yesterday when he told us about being drafted by the Angels this week in the 47th round. He's going to give it a shot in professional baseball. And I think I know we both got misty eye when he told us the story yesterday about Coach Murphy coming up to him earlier in the week right before game said I don't want to distract you but I want to congratulate you because you've been drafted by the Angels. And Rudy told the coach please leave him alone because he didn't want to cry in front of him. Base hit to left by Moreno. Arguez running on the pitch is on to third base. First and third and one out for Arizona State in the fourth inning. They're down by four and trying to inch closer still. Well, Murphy is not, he's not afraid to run just four runs down because he ran with when he was down eight. So he's going to start his runners. In fact, a lot of his runners have the green light, so they may be going on their own. But in this case, it worked out well because Moreno who does have power for this club smacks one to left field and they got first and third and they're back in business again. Runners at the corners with one out. Arguez at third and Moreno at first. And the big bats in the lineup coming up. Andrew Beinbrink has walked twice. He scored after drawing the leadoff walk in the second the inning in which ASU scored all five of its runs. And a miss. This is one of the few times that Beinbrick has been fooled today. Comes up in a, a situation with runners in scoring position. Maybe thought he was going to get a fastball. Got that off speed breaking ball we talked about down and in, and Sean alluded to his long swing. We just saw it. One strike pitch is high. Well, we took you to Dingerville. There's another highlight of life just outside Rosenblatt Stadium. All kinds of food. Zestos doing big business again with the milkshakes. Throw to second, safe as Moreno. Down by four, they're still running with regularity, and Moreno has the stolen base, his 27th of the year. Moreno really set up Lane the first pitch to Beinberg he had no lead there he doesn't have much of a lead either but he's going all the way a lot of times base runners will shorten up their lead just a bit when they know they're going so they can lean towards second and not have to be worrying about diving back towards first base and makes it easily. Now two men in scoring position and a ball up and away to Beinberg. Arguez at third, Moreno now at second. Beinbrink drives it to center. Freitas retreating. And he makes the catch on the warning track. Both runners tag up. Arguez has scored, and on to third goes Moreno. And it's nine to six. Beinbrink. Adds to his league leading total 83 runs batted in for the year now for the junior from San Diego. Sean good teams take advantage of other teams mistakes. This inning started out with an error by the usually dependable shortstop Seth Davidson. Then a couple running plays get runners in scoring position and then the best RBI man on the club and in the Pac-10 delivers in the clutch. And it is an unearned run. 
Any subsequent runs would be unearned as well. <laughs> Jeff Phelps almost took the standing eight count, self inflicted. After that big swing and a miss, he manages to smile about it. He singled right in the second inning and flied to center to end the second. He batted twice as they sent 11 men to the plate. One and one the count. This run unearned the first charge to Jason Lane. Jeff's a freshman. Coach Murphy says he's still learning to hit. A little bit too much of a free swinger right now for the coach's liking. But playing lately with a bad hip. Oh. Close but a ball. Says the home plate umpire Dick Runchy. Three balls and a strike. Count. Here's Dick Runchy, a fixture at the College World Series, working his fifth championship game, the fourth time he's been behind the plate. What a great honor that is. And this is his last game. He's retiring as an umpire after today, and we wish him well. Counts, deep drive the left, way back, and gone. A two run homer by the freshman Jeff Phelps. Arizona State once down eight to nothing, now trails nine to eight. Sean, you made a great comment about the coach's comment that he's a free swinger, made to look bad on two pitches during this at bat. Then gets a 3 2 pitch right down Broadway, and free swingers, when they connect, they go a long way. And that's why he's in there. Fifth homer of the year for Phelps. Now Dustin Delucchi with a line drive just out of the reach of Davidson. So the Sun Devils have the tying run at first. Deluki's first hit, he's one for three. Deluki gets a fastball. He thinks Davidson's caught this ball. <laughs> he was running to first base with the bat in his hand. He was ready to make a right turn. And the pitching coach John Savage on his way to the mound. And that might be it for Lane, who has had a tremendous College World Series. It will be. The right hander Steve Emmel has been summoned. USC now clinging to a one run lead in Omaha. Jason Lane out of the ball game. What a tremendous College World Series he has had. 13 hits and the number of pitching performances and we mentioned Zestos no trip to Omaha would be complete the College World Series without a visit to Zestos world famous right next door great milkshakes. I can second that and for two days out of the year we're off our diets. <laughs> <laughs> this is the uh, hot fudge shake. And that sounded like a commercial but it's really not it's a, just a tribute to one of the Omaha traditions here they do booming box office with good reason. During the College World Series. Steve Immel is the new pitcher. Right hander, a junior, not a big fella, 5'9, 175 pounds from Lakewood, California. He's in with the tying run at first, the go ahead run at the plate for Arizona State. Casey Myers, the batter. The freshman's at a perfect day, two for two with two singles and a run scored. Immel's the third pitcher already for USC here in the bottom of the fourth. Rick Courier, the starter, lasted an inning and a third. Then Jason Lane and now Immel.
Fouled out of play to the right. Sean, Steve Immel is one of the guys we weren't quite sure we were going to see or not. We got a little book on him. He's, he'd get his fastball, kind of a sink, sinking type fastball, almost 90 miles an hour. He's got a pretty good curveball and he's got a good changeup, but he's going to have to wipe off some of the rust because uh, he hasn't been in there very often. He hasn't pitched at all in this College World Series. Been used mostly in relief this year. Five and one with a 5.72 ERA and 21 appearances. Three of them starts. The 2 2 pitch to Myers. Chopped slowly down to Ensberg. And he goes across the diamond. For the out that ends the inning. Three unearned runs were put up by ASU, and they're down by only a run now after four in Omaha. I can't believe I can get this close with an electric shaver. This is smooth. We're introducing men to the power of three. The new Remington Microscreen 3. It's so fast. It gives you three things no other shaver can. The most powerful motor of all leading brands, 150 precision cutting edges, and three flexing microscreens. Guaranteed to get you incredibly close, incredibly fast. The power of three. Only with the new Remington Microscreen 3. Built to shave incredibly close. How are little people doing today? Just having the Sicilian from Pizza Hut. How about a slice? You can't handle the Sicilian. I mean, being a shallow corporate raider can't prepare you for garlic, basil, and oregano, or the blast of cheese, herb, seasonings in every morsel. Napkin. Our new Sicilian pizza, only at Pizza Hut, only $8.99. For the absolute mother of a deal, get up to three toppings or any specialty pizza for two bucks more. I hope I wasn't out of line with that shallow corporate raider crack. The Sicilian pizza from Pizza Hut. Can you handle it? The NCAA College World Series is sponsored by Pizza Hut, home of the new Sicilian pizza. Can you handle it? Remington's Micro Screen 3 Shaver, built to shave incredibly close. And by ERA Real Estate, proud sponsor of the ERA Championship Series. Back in Omaha, we're in the top of the fifth, and this year marks the 50th anniversary of USC's first national championship. The man who guided them to that title, Rod Dido, and thank you so much. Dado, I'm so sorry. Um, well, I've the aged difference. 50 the di years. You've aged 50 years I've in the last just few innings. In the last few innings, 50 years. Rod, tell me with the difference between this game, you look around you at how big it has become in that first title game for you. Is it that wonderful? The growth of it has been absolutely tremendous. We had a packed house in that game 50 years ago, but that was 7,000 people in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Because there was a difference. The first baseman for that team of Yale we were playing was the captain and the first baseman. His name was Bush. His first name was George. <laughs> no, you have coached so many big-time players in your 45 years at USC. Tell me about Mark McGuire. What do you think? You think he's going to break Roger Maris's home run record? He he's an outstanding boy. Great parents. He has the mental makeup to be able to do it. He's he'll. I remember uh, Tony La Russa telling me in his first year when he was hitting quite a few home runs. He had never seen an individual carry fame like that. And Mark is the type of guy that could stand the pressures of that kind of a race. Now what about another one of your former players. Uh, he's with us here today. Fred Lynn is he really as good or was he really as good in college as you as he says he was. Uh, he, well, he was better. We called him freshman Freddie and I always remember when he first my son Justin had scouted him. He was a football player and a good one and a left hand pitcher. And he played in this ball game with a team against our team because we were getting ready for the playoff. And we had a guy by the name of Dave Kingman pitching who could really fire. And Freddie hit a line shot down the right field line. And I, I'd asked Justin where he came from. And after he hit that shot, I said, "Wait a minute! Don't anybody touch this guy. He's mine. I'll do all the talking there is to Freddie." Rod Freddie was Dado. outstanding. Rod Dado, thanks so much. You've cleared it up. We'll never give him a bad time again. Back to you guys. Thank you. Brad Tyser is trying to bunt his way on, and Aaron Kramer was off the mound quickly. Uh, certainly would never correct Coach Dato, one of the great legends in 
all of college sports but there's no way Fred could be any better than he actually says he is. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks John. <laughs> Here you see a little bit of a surprise Tysers who has three home runs in the College World Series but he had struck out five straight times. Uh, last time he popped up so he's trying to get on base any way he can because he feels like he's lost his, his uh, stroke a little bit. That's good plan. Jason Lane the D.H. Back as the D.H. He was the D.H. the pitcher now the D.H. And he is attacking the College World Series record book with 13 hits one short of the record 14 hits in one College World Series set last year by Joe Caruso of Alabama. Lane has doubled and popped up today. He's tied the record for total bases in the College World Series 26 set by Jeff Jenkins of USC in 1995. And with the double he's tied the record for doubles with four held by 11 others. And pop up the second. Some of the names on that list of doubles four in a College World Series are familiar. Sal Bando, Spike Owen, Barry Bonds, Robin Ventura, and John Bacabella, among others, with four doubles in one College World Series, a record tied by Lane today. Two outs and the base is empty. Aaron Kramer, after a rough start, has settled into a groove. Retired six USC hitters in a row. Freitas sends one a long way down the left field line. DeLuke makes the catch. Dustin DeLuke with an acrobatic grab along the left field line. He put the finishing touches on a one two three inning with an exclamation point. Wasn't sure he needed to die but he added some style points. Halfway through the ball game nine to eight Southern California. CBS Sports proud to present this ERA championship series event the 1998 College World Series championship game. Dustin DeLuke with the most recent highlight the tumbling catch along the line. 50 years in Omaha next year. All of us at CBS Sports are looking forward to coming back for that. Here's Greg Halverson. Leading off the fifth for ASU. He has singled and scored back in the five run second. He struck out swinging in the third. Facing reliever Steve Immel, who came in last inning, he got a ground out to end the inning with the tying run at first. First pitch from Immel, a strike. ASU with eight runs. One run scored by eight different players. The only start in the lineup was not scored today. The leadoff hitter Bloomquist, and he's been on base once. Was stranded at second. Sean, even though ASU is down by a run, all the momentum of this game is turned towards their side of the field. Not only they are just one run down after being down eight to nothing, but they're deep into USC's pin, and that was a real concern of Coach Gillespie's going in, and that's the price you pay. When you come through that elimination bracket, they played five games and they've used all their stars. And the cupboard is bare. And Coach Gillespie might have to go a long way today with his All American closer, Jack Krofcheck. A 1 2 from Immel to Halverson, a late swing. He seemed fooled by that pitch over the outside part of the plate, and Halverson strikes out for the second time. With one out here comes Michael Collins. He had the biggest hit of this ball game for ASU. They were down eight to one when he had a grand slam in the second inning that got them right back into the ball game. He had just one career hit with the bases loaded prior to that grand slam. It was just his fourth home run of the season. He turned the bunt, got the corners charging, and took a strike. Collins flied the left last time up. Sean, we've had some uh, run production by some unusual sources. Michael Collins and Wes Rachels, two guys that normally don't hit the ball very far, supplied a lot of the power today. 
And Collins hit the ball to Rachel's. Rachel's threw him out. Rachel's is at a three run homer today. And has knocked in four of the nine SC runs. Coming up next on CBS Sports, third round coverage of the Kemper Open live from Potomac, Maryland. Fred Funk has just started his third round through one hole. He's still 12 under par where he was after two rounds. Two players tied for second now. Kemper Open coming up next. Bloomquist a bouncer to short. Davidson to Gore for the out. And Immel has come out of the bullpen to retire all four men he has faced. A seven pitch inning. Still 9 8 USC after five. Top of the sixth back in Omaha USC leads by one and I am with Ron Wellman the new chairman of the NCAA Division one baseball committee your first year on the job and you guys are already talking about big changes for this tournament. Well we're looking at the possibility of expanding the bracket to 64 teams right now we have a 48 team bracket and we would like to advance it to 64 uh, that would give us an opportunity to increase the regionals from eight regionals that we currently have to 16 regionals and then those four teams Teams or those 16 winners would advance to an eight team uh, super regional. Could that happen as early as next year? Well, we're hoping it will. Uh, the board of directors will be voting on that in August, and, and uh, we're hopeful that uh, it will pass. It has passed the management council and the cabinet, so uh, there hasn't been much opposition to it thus far, and we're hoping that the board of directors will see so. Everyone's been talking about the offensive explosion in college baseball. Any chance or any talk of possibly going back to a wood bat? I really doubt that we're going to see wooden bats in, in college baseball again. I think that you will see maybe some revision in the uh, aluminum bats that we're currently using. Uh, everybody's talking about the, the the power that has been demonstrated in, in this series, and the bat may have something to do with it, but it's also a fact that the players are much bigger and stronger today than they have been in the past. Cost you a little more for the baseballs this year. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Guys. Back to you guys. All right. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks to Ron Wellman as well. He is the athletic director at Wake Forest. And he makes a key point. Yes, they do have the aluminum bats, but as Skip Bertman, the LSU coach, pointed out to us last week, the players are much bigger and stronger. And there's a lack of quality pitching because generally the best pitchers coming out of high school get signed by major league teams right out of high school. Those organizations are looking for pitching talent, but the pitching so thin in professional baseball, so that's where they spend the money to make sure. They get those high school pitchers right into major league organizations. Sean, one other point is uh, there's a lot of inconsistencies with the balls, too. A lot of years they're wound a little tighter than they are in other years. Seth Davidson with a base hit for USC to begin the sixth inning. Davidson's now two for three. Well, both uh, bottoms of the order for both ball clubs have been productive. This is a jam shot. Again, now if that's a wooden bat, that probably is caught by the shortstop. But with aluminum, that's what you get. You know, not only do you get home runs, but the ball gets through the infield a little quicker, and you get those type of hits. Whereas uh, if you were using wood, but we're not going to. We just heard that. Throw to first to keep an eye on Davidson. And Kramer had retired seven Trojans in a row. For that base hit. Big swing and a miss by Rachels. Rachels became a starter at USC late in his freshman year of 1995. Had a great college World Series then, hit 471. To lead USC. They lost in the national championship game. He scored eight runs in the CWS in 95. To lead the College World Series. And he's doing it again this year. Davidson has 16 stolen bases and thrown out three times. Rachel's today, three for three, a single and a run scored in the first, a three run homer, just the sixth home run of his four year career. In the second, and an RBI single from Mike Gillespie in the third. Yeah. 
They get a good look at the lead. But Phelps being a right-handed first baseman, now he's only a freshman. But as a right-hander, you want to make sure your glove is towards the pitcher so you can cut down the time that you have to get to the runner. You, ideally, you'd like to have a left-handed first baseman so he can slap the tag on him with his right hand. You can see his, his glove hand is towards the catcher. The runner goes. They have a hit and run on, and what a piece of hitting by Rachels. DeLuke, you can't get that one with the die. Davidson coming around to score. Wes Rachels has his fourth hit of the ball game and his fifth run batted in. And he did an amazing job to get the bat on the ball with a hit and run on and a pitch up and in. He left his feet, jumped at it. The pitch looked to be about shoulder high, and he pulled it down the line. These are the kind of things, Sean, you practice during BP. You say, okay, the hit and run, hit and run is on. You got to hit this ball and put it in play. And Rachel does just that. He's about 5'8". He was 6'3 when he swung at that pitch. Looks like an instant replay from an inning before. DeLuke just out of his reach makes a nice try but the run the runners gone Trojan put the, the ball in play and boy that's that's great fundamental baseball right there well, Rachel's is four for four with five runs batted in ASU is looking for a bunt from Greg Hanoi and they're up on the grass at the corners and Hanoi does bunt Kramer stepped in front of Phelps and throws to the second baseman Bloomquist covering. It's a sacrifice. And Rachels is now at third with one out. I like the fact that these hitters square around early. If you're going to sacrifice, it doesn't matter who knows about it. You're trying to give yourself up to advance the runner. So what you're saying is essentially is that we're going to give up an out. So get your bat in preparation early and that's what he did he got the bat head up above the ball laid down a perfect bunt got to run on third base <coughs> now the infield is in with Rob Gore up there Gore's two for three a three run homer in the first a solo homer in the second he grounded out in the fourth you mentioned he's tied the championship game record with Two home runs. And he hits that one very high in the air. Not all that deep in left center. The catch made by Arguez. His throw to the plate is cut off and relayed home by Phelps, not in time. Rachel scores. And USC takes an 11 to 8 lead. And Gore has his fifth run batted in. USC manufactured that run. Here you get to see Arguez. He's calling off the left fielder because he has a better angle. But the, he doesn't get any momentum behind this throw. He's flat footed when he catches the ball. You're taught as an outfielder to always have your momentum going towards the throw. You'd have to have a, a Dave Winfeld type arm to be able to throw flat footed from that distance. And then the first base was not going to cut that throw. That throw is online. You're never going to get somebody with a cut throw. Pat Murphy to the mound. Kramer's given him four and two thirds innings of relief, and that might be it. There is action in the ASU bullpen. USC's lead is back to three. It had been narrowed to one. They once led by eight. 11 national titles, 71 wins, more than any other school at the College World Series, and their winning percentage is best as well. Well, this, you know, when we were, I think the dominance here, you're seeing that's from the 70s. That's obvious. They haven't been dominant lately. But when we were here, we dominated. We had this on our schedule. And we dominated with pitching and defense. And in those days, we played in the dead bat era. And uh, that's what won championships. You saw a graphic earlier where we beat ASU four to three and one to nothing. Just tight ball games where one run meant everything. Well, we were fundamentally sound. Uh, and that's a lot due to our coach, Rod Dato, as we talked to earlier. And that's why we won those championships. I saw Chad Pennington and Phil Lowry warming up in the Arizona State Boltmen. Coach Murphy will stay with Kramer who throws a strike 
to Eric Munson, who's one for three today, a first inning single. USC has 11 runs on 12 hits. They've made one costly error. Eight runs, nine hits, no errors for Arizona State. Matt Murphy, just 39 years old, has already won 522 games as a college head coach, youngest ever to reach 500. He's a native of Syracuse, New York. And his mom, Dorothy, was watching back in Syracuse. He asked us to say hello to his mother. 82 years old and the head of a very colorful Murphy clan. We met a couple of Pat Murphy's brothers here yesterday. He has three brothers. Two of them are here, Dan and David. Older brother Dan, 13 years older than Pat, is a huge Boston Red Sox fan. And you met another brother, David, yesterday, who was absolutely thrilled to meet Fred Lynn. And Pat Murphy said it's a good thing Dan didn't meet Fred Lynn, or he might have been speechless. <laughs> Yeah, but they were big Sean McDonough fans too. Uh -huh. I, I need to. I, oh yes, they were. <laughs> They're from Syracuse. That's right. The great Salt City. The one-two to Munson. A bullet down to first, and what a play by Phelps on the Kramer for the out. Well, we've seen all kinds of offense, but plenty of defense too. Heading to the bottom of the sixth inning in Omaha, the Trojans lead by three. The NCAA College World Series on CBS Sports. Sean McDonough with Fred Lynn and Andrea Joyce. Today's game produced by Bob Dinkus and directed by Mike Arnold. And it's been another wild one. 19 run score that ties the College World Series championship game record set last year when LSU beat Alabama 13 to 6. Rudy Arguelles squared to bunt. And he looked at ball one high. He has struck out, walked, and reached on the error by Davidson that opened the door for three unearned runs in the fourth inning. Steve Immel, the third pitcher of the day for USC, has retired all four batters he has faced in his first College World Series appearance. He's gone to 2 0 with Arguelles. Batters 2, 3, and 4 coming up for the Sun Devils. Michael Moreno on deck, then Andrew Beinbrink. And there they are. Arguelles trying to extend a seven game hitting streak. Foul ball. Mentioned his story. He does have a five year old son. He and his wife Michelle are also expecting their second child. They know that will be a baby boy. Michelle's due at the end of the month. Michelle's been home taping all of these College World Series games. But someday young Rudy the third and the child be born later this month will have a chance to look back at what their daddy did in the College World Series, and he's done a tremendous amount. Now he's a pretty special kid. Uh, well, he's a young man, yes. uh, uh, man among boys, maybe. But uh, boy, it's just what a great story. You know, you just, you just love to hear these kinds of things. I mean, he just never quit. He just never quit. And you know, here he is in the pinnacle of college baseball. And who would have thought? Hold the second. Rachel's throws him out. We mentioned Arguelles is going to give it a shot in professional ball. He's certainly a long shot to fare well in the Angels organization. You have to give them credit. They're aware of his story and they used the 47th round draft pick on a 26 year old, which is unusual. Arguelles talked with his wife, Michelle, and he's going to head out and play professional baseball when this is over. He had been interviewing for jobs as a longshoreman. Well, that'll be on hold. As he goes to. Join the Angel organization, he hopes. Michael Moreno fouls one off. You know, Sean, it would be very hard to bet against a guy like that. You know, you'd say, well, he's got limited tools, he's got this, but he's got the biggest doggone heart you'd ever want to see. And sometimes uh, those are the kind of guys that makes the club go. And, you know, maybe he'll be a 25th guy for somebody. You never know. We're all pulling for him, that's for sure. Moreno puts a charge into one and left center field. Freitas. With the catch on the warning track. That's another ball that 
on several other days of this College World Series would have been out of here but the breeze knocked that one down a little bit and there are two down in the ASU six. I've watched Freitas now for a couple of games and normally he's a flank outfielder usually a left fielder because he doesn't have great speed here you see Moreno getting most of this ball but he got it up into that wind and that's what knocked it down but Freitas he takes those little tiny steps you know he's not he's not a center fielder he doesn't want to be out there normally annoying the center fielder but he's got the bad hamstring so he's in left. Oh. And certainly as we saw in that replay Emil got away with the hanging breaking ball to Moreno. When Immel's retired every batter he has faced. Here's Andrew Beinbrink. It was walked twice and had a sacrifice fly, so not yet an official at bat in this championship game for Beinbrink. Andrew's a junior from San Diego who makes his own clothing. As a matter of fact, he says about 90% of the pants and shorts that he wears, he made. Started doing that when he was a youngster. Doesn't mind the ribbing that his teammates give him about spending time at the sewing machine. And there's his own little clothing line that he started. Fastball for a strike three and one. Well, that's awesome. Some of those companies like No Fear got started doing T-shirts mm -hmm. and things. You never know. We may be reading about this guy in Fortune 500. And there's ball four. Beinbrink has walked three times. That's the first Sun Devil to reach base since Immel took to the mound. With two outs in the fourth inning. Two outs in the sixth now. Here's Jeff Phelps. Just made a terrific play to end the top of the inning on a diving stop of a shot off the bat of Eric Munson. Phelps singled in the first, rather in the second, in his first at bat. Flied out to end the second as they batted around. Hit a two run homer last time up. Run came against Jason Lane, who pitched two and a third innings of relief. Gave up three runs all unearned. And Lane has really been the MVP of this College World Series, both with his pitching and his hitting. You know, guys like Gore and Rachels are making quite a statement today. As a matter of fact, Rachels and Gore for USC have each driven in five runs today. That ties the College World Series. Championship game record. Well, Sean, normally when the number four and five hitters, Munson and Ensberg, aren't doing anything offensively, the Trojans struggle to score, but not so today. The rest of the squad's been picking up the slack. There's a strike on Phelps. He's in the hole 0 and 2. Eleven to eight. Southern California has the lead in the bottom of the six. Two outs. Mine brink at first. Oh. I mentioned Rachel's and Gore tied the record. Five runs batted in in the championship game. The record had been shared by Bill Horning of Minnesota, Mark Kotze of Cal State Fullerton. It's the second time we've mentioned their names because they're also the two players who had hit two home runs in the championship game before. Gore did it today. Horning, Kotze, and Gore all with two homers and five runs batted in. Rachel's one homer and five runs batted in today and four for four. One and two on the freshman Phelps. Phelps had a big performance last Sunday against Miami three for four in the win over the Hurricanes. He drove in three runs. He took a ball inside two and two. He was a high school shortstop last year. This year a first baseman in D.H. Six feet 180 pounds. And he's battled from 0 and 2 to 3 and 2. So Beinbrink a good runner. Will be off from first with the payoff pitch to Phelps. 
Sean this was the count that uh, he had last time when he hit the home run. He got a 3 2 fastball and he showed us he knows what to do with that. Both bullpens quiet at the moment. The payoff from Immo. Ball four down and away. Well, that brings the tying run to the plate. Back to back walks with two outs. And that brings up Dustin Deluki, who has had a busy day in left field. Coach Pat Murphy wanted him to play like Pete Rose and that little extra dive was the kind of thing that Pete Rose used to do in the field. Now all he needs to do is hit like Pete Rose. Today he has one hit in three at bats a single. Also picked up an RBI with a fielder's choice back in the second inning in which he scored a run John Savage back at the mound no action in the SC bullpen. Another beautiful day in Omaha and another record crowd on hand. Pat Murphy coaching in his first national championship game before a crowd of 24,456. This is the championship game record. 24,456. They look on as the tying runs at the plate for ASU in the sixth inning. Luki does not have a home run this year, so it's unlikely that he'd rip one out of here. But of all the unlikely things we've seen in this ballpark over the years, it isn't that unlikely. With that crowd that we mentioned, they've also set a record for the entire College World Series. More than 204,000 fans came into Johnny Rosenblatt Stadium since last Thursday, breaking last year's record attendance total by 52 fans. All outside, one and one on Deluki. Reinbrink at second, Phelps at first. Two outs, sixth inning, 11 to 8, USC. Borderline strike on the corner. Coaches tell us that during the regular year in college baseball, the strike zone is extremely small. It's become an annual tradition here at the College World Series for it to be a wide strike zone. Skip Burton, after losing yesterday, the LSU coach praised the umpires for the great job that they have done here. That's low and away. Two and two. Sean, you think it'd be the other way around? You know, you'd think that uh, they would have a, a generous strike zone during the season because. The college game does take a little bit of time to play because the pitching isn't quite that good. They're not quite that sharp, so they should bend a little bit. Yeah, they should make it a wide strike zone all the time. The 2 2 is popped up near the on deck circle. Munson, the catcher, has it. And ASU leaves two men on. Steve Immel, unlikely to be in the game when it started, has been outstanding out of the bullpen. And USC still leads by three. At the Kemper Open, British Open winner Justin Leonard is the defending champion here. This is yesterday, a five iron at the par 317. Now on day three, Fred Funk leads by four over Tommy Tolls. Coverage coming up shortly. New pitcher for Arizona State as the seventh inning rolls around. Freshman Chad Pennington has had an outstanding season with a seven and two record and three saves. He's from Hamilton, Ohio, just outside Cincinnati. And his first pitch is a strike to Morgan Ensberg. Ensberg, the number five hitter, leads off. 0 for 2 with a hit by pitch back in the second inning. 
So Aaron Kramer gave ASU five innings. And he allowed five runs. All earned on six hits. He did not walk a man, and Ensberg has a leadoff hit. Kramer struck out one hit a batter through 77 pitches while he was in there. John, this is the first at bat where Morgan Ensberg has just tried to hit the ball up the box, and he does. He's been trying to pull every pitch and has not been successful thus far. You can see he stays right on this ball. A good breaking ball down and away and pops it right through the box. One strike on Brad Ticehurst. The only player in the game today who has not reached base. 0 for 3, a strikeout, a pop up, and a bouncer back to the mound. Ticehurst got off to a great start. In this College World Series, eight for his first 16, including three homers. Now he's 0 for his last nine. Well, Coach Gillespie told us he was very streaky, and he's in the wrong streak right now. Started off like a house of fire, but he's having trouble putting the bat on the ball the last couple of games. And there's a wide strike zone for Pennington. You can see the, the coach Gillespie relays the signs to the third base coach. And then they, he relays them to the hitter. And Tyser strikes out. First strikeout for Pennington. Tyser's now over four. Tyser's has a, a big long swing. It, it kind of reminds me of my swing when I got bad. And. When you get, go bad with this long swing, you have trouble catching with, up with balls that are above your waist. You can see that the ball is above his letters almost. And when you're struggling, you start swinging at just about everything. And right now, he is in a definite funk. First pitch to Jason Lane fouled away. Lane needs a hit to tie the College World Series record for hits. In one World Series, 14. He has 13, including a double today. He's only tripping three at bats. The last two times up, he's popped out to the second baseman Bloomquist. USC leads 11 to 8. Trojans trying to add to that lead in the top of the seventh. They have Ensberg at first. He is running, hit and run on, and Lane lined it foul into the record crowd. You might expect a freshman like Pennington to be rattled, but Coach Murphy talked about his tremendous poise and competitiveness. And then yesterday, when we talked with Chad Pennington, he told us that he pitched in the Little League World Series back in 1991 on a team that finished seventh place in the world. And then last summer, he pitched in the Connie Mack World Series with an all star team from the Cincinnati area. That competition was held in Farmington, New Mexico. So he's a Veteran of just about every World Series there is. Now in the College World Series. That's lifted to center field by Lane. Rudy Arguez to catch. Ensberg went back to tag up. And he won't try for second with two downs. You asked Pennington yesterday about the socks, the high socks. And he mentioned that last year in the County Mac World Series, he went with the one high sock and one low sock look. But he didn't think Coach Murphy would let him get away with that. No, that's a definitely a left-hander's comment right there. I'm waiting for him to throw his knuckleball. Up the middle, base hit for Jeremy Freitas. Just out of the reach of Pennington and the second baseman Bloomquist. So Freitas is three for four. And the Trojans have two runners with two outs in the seventh. Well, Freitas has had, had a hot bat for the Trojans most of the College World Series, but I want you to watch. I don't know if we're going to be able to see it or not, but the runner, Morgan Ensberg, he was taking a look at the third base coach there for a sign. The play's in front of you. That's when you have to decide on your own if you're going to go to third base. You're not going to look for the third base coach in that kind of a situation. 
Now the number nine hitter Seth Davidson. Trojans looking for more breathing room. They lead by three in the seventh. They know how quickly the lead can evaporate. They led eight to nothing after an inning and a half. Watched ASU get as close as one run at nine to eight. Davidson two for three with a couple of singles and two runs scored. The Trojans now have 14 hits. Two balls and no strikes on Davidson. Ensberg at second, Freitas at first. And as Fred mentioned a moment ago, Pennington will occasionally throw a knuckleball, although he told us yesterday he hasn't thrown one yet here in the College World Series. He pitched three and a third innings here prior to today. He was also great in the Midwest Regional. Starting with the Regional, he's thrown eight and a third scoreless innings. Coming into this outing. 3 0 is a strike. They get a look at the defensive positioning of the outfield, especially in left and center. They're very, very shallow. Be very difficult if the balls hit sharply to left or center for Innsburg to score from second. And that's ball four. That loads the bases. And a big spot right here for Pat Murphy, his team trying to. Stay within a reasonable distance. Now Wes Rachels who needs a triple to hit for the cycle. Rachel singled and scored in the first to the three run homer in the second single to knock in a run in the third double to knock in a run and he scored again in the sixth. So he's four for four today. Gore and Rachels have each knocked in five runs to tie the record. Ensberg left a long way down the line. But didn't throw off Pennington. Hoping that the freshman might commit a balk with the bases loaded, but Pennington delivered smoothly and threw a strike to Rachels. Yeah, they, they, that is taught when the pitcher does not go in the stretch because you want him to give him a little bit of a flinch. Normally, with bases loaded, the pitcher will go in stretch just to prevent that from happening. Ginsburg down the line again. Close pitch called the ball, one and one. And now he might be distracting Rachel's more than he's dis distracting Pennington. Rachel's has been a very solid college player. Never has received much interest from professional teams. He was drafted earlier this week by Philadelphia in the 33rd round. As Coach Gillespie says, even though he's a very solid all-around player, he doesn't have any of the tools that really jump right out at you. Not a lot of power, not great speed, not a tremendous throwing arm. Just a very solid all around player. One and two the count. Pennington trying to get out of the jam. John, as you well know, doing your major league broadcast, those are the kind of guys you build your club around, though. You've got to have those kind of guys on a ball club. Well, Rachel's with a chance to. Add to one of the great days in College World Series history. Pennington trying to keep the Sun Devils close. Here comes Ensberg trying to steal home. He's safe at home. Ensberg steals home. And the ball gets away from Halverson, the catcher. Pat Murphy's on the field arguing as the catcher goes to the backstop. A time had been called. Ensberg, after bluffing hard down the line several times during the at bat, comes charging down the line and steals and Murphy's arguing Sean this is an un unbelievable play he steals home with two strikes on the hitter I mean Rachel's has got to protect the plate fortunately this ball is high otherwise Rachel's has to swing at it you can see Rachel's he's in no man's land. he's trying to duck this ball no question he can see the runner coming it's a bang bang play at the plate. We can't really tell from that angle. And I don't think the umpire could either. He was kind of blocked out. This is the last play an umpire thinks he's going to get right here. He looks safe there. He sure does. Boy, I'll tell you what. <laughs> this is unbelievable baseball. I can honestly say I've never seen this. Of all the players we've talked to in recent years here at the College World Series, the guy most likely to steal home with the bases loaded, two strikes on a right-handed hitter up there, is Morgan Ensberg. Rachel delivers a big hit. Two more runs 
will score. Wes Rachels finishing his USC career with a five-hit game. He has knocked in a College World Series seven runs in this championship game. Five for five, three runs scored, seven runs batted in for the senior from Los Angeles. I tell you what, Sean, all those bluffs didn't affect Pennington a bit, but when he finally did steal home, Wes Rachel's finally got a ball to hit, got a 3-2 count and spanked another one. Freitas and Davidson scored. So all this damage done with two outs. Three big runs in the inning, and Rachel's a threat to run at first. The lead back up to six runs for USC, and the batter is Greg Hanoyan. You're wondering the last time a player stole home in a College World Series game it was last year. Mike Kerner of LSU did it against Stanford. Hanoi in the seventh batter of the inning. One and all the count. And John, we have to point out most steals of home occur on the back end of a double steal. Usually the guy from first breaks and then the runner from third breaks and then he steals home that is credited with a steal of home but a straight steal of home that's a really a rare thing to see and with two strikes on the hitter of course you made the comment Morgan Hensburg I mean he he's loose there's he's no question very, about it very loose very <laughs> laid back kind of a Southern California guy he's not ashamed of it nor should he be and he's a great story. If you weren't with us last weekend, he was the last man cut from the team from the traveling squad that came to the College World Series the last time they were here in 1995. He was a backup shortstop to a great player in USC history, Gabe Alvarez. He appeared in only 14 games during the year, so Ensberg, they could only bring 25 men. He was the 26th. So Ensberg and his mom jumped in the car and drove from Los Angeles to Omaha, their own expense. Morgan State sat in the stands for every game except the championship game was in civilian clothes in the dugout for the championship game. He wanted to see what it was like. Now he's back here as a very important member of the team. Perhaps on his way to winning the championship in his last game at USC. Not only is seven runs batted in a championship game record but it ties the record for any college World Series game. Rachels was running on the 3 2 pitch to Hanoi and walks for the second time. Carl Thomas of Arizona, Stan Holmes of Arizona State in 1954 and in 1981. Drove in seven runs in a College World Series game. The mark tied by Rachels today. Rachels has five hits. That ties the single game CWS record held by 10 others. Some of the names on that list are familiar Ron Hassey Terry Francona Dave Magadan Barry Bonds Gabe Alvarez among those with five hits in a CWS game. Hanoian lifted for a pinch runner Rod Perry is running. He's been a late inning defensive replacement throughout the College World Series. So with a six run lead. He'll improve the base running and the defense with Perry taking over for Hanoian. Rob Gore looked at strike one. There's Perry. His dad. A coach with the San Diego Chargers. Rob Gore. Has hit two home runs today. And he pulls one foul down by the Arizona State bullpen. Gore hit a three run homer in the first a solo shot in the second he had a sacrifice fly last inning. Sean every time Gore's got a ball from the middle in he's just killed it. The only time they get, have gotten him out when they've kept the ball away from him. And I'm sure that's what Halverson's kind of going out to talk to Pennington about say hey don't be throwing that guy in there. He's got the do not disturb sign out plus it's 0 2 now. Let's be careful. Well with the count 0 2 that means Rachel's is going to try to steal home from second base. <laughs> Not only has Rachel's been unbelievable at the plate, particularly in this game, but he's also handled 27 chances now in the field without an error at the College World Series. This RBI record might not last very long if Gore rips another one out of here. That would give him eight runs batted in for the game, and Rachel's would have had the record for about five minutes. <laughs>
Two balls, two strikes, two men on, two outs. 14 to 8 USC in the seventh inning. Fly ball along the right field line for Michael Moreno. He makes the catch and foul ground. That ends the inning. But the Trojans add three more. And they lead by six during the seventh inning stretch. Back at Rosenblatt Stadium, bottom of the seventh, USC with a six-run lead. Well, the USC players have grown very attached to their new maroon jerseys. They just got them in the postseason, and already they have a perfect record in those jerseys, 4-0. and oh. All four of those wins came in elimination games. If they go on to win the national championship today, there is a feeling, Sean, that you'll never be able to peel these things off their backs. <laughs> Well, Coach Gillespie said that yesterday. He was delighted to find out that his team would be the visiting team. His team would have a chance to wear these jerseys because they've fallen in love with them. They have a number of uniform options. You mentioned earlier Jeff Jenkins and Gabe Alvarez, two recent Trojans of the past, have gone on to professional baseball. When they left the program, they wanted to give something back, so they designed and paid for black sleeveless uniforms that the Trojans have been wearing on Sundays. And the Trojan players like those too. But they're greater fans of these uniforms they're wearing today because they've had considerable success in them. They would have had a tough dilemma if this game had been on Sunday with a winning streak. And then Sunday, they wouldn't know what to do. Casey Myers with a base hit. And once again, it's a long comeback trail ahead of Arizona State, now down by six. Well one thing that we've seen from Arizona State today they do not give up. They will just keep coming at you and keep coming at you and they lead the College World Series in hitting. So these guys are swinging hot bats too. That's just not quite as hot as the Trojans today thus far. Greg Halverson takes ball one low. Halverson's one for three. He singled and scored during the five run second. He has struck out twice since, including once against the pitcher now on the mound, Steve Immel. And the pitch hit the bat, apparently, it hit his arm. Apparently, it's a foul ball. Pat Murphy's out of the dugout wanting to ask the home plate umpire Dick Runchy about it, and Runchy tells him it hit the bat. Yeah, you can see it hits the butt end of the bat. And this is where you got to do a little bit of play acting as a hitter. You got to drop back. Oh, 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 got me, got me. But he's six foot four, 225 pounds. I said, nah, this stuff's not going to hurt me. He fouls one away to the right. He's in the hole one and two. So were you a drama major at USC? <laughs> I tell you what, when the ball came that close to me, I was on the deck. I was hurt. <laughs> of course, all my buddies would say, oh, yeah, what's new? <laughs> Steve Immel making his first appearance in the College World Series. He's allowed just one hit. There's another out of the reach of Ensberg. A base hit for Halverson. And here come the Sun Devils again. If you joined us late, they trailed eight to nothing after an inning and a half. And got to within nine to eight. They've never gotten quite even. But now the Trojans have pushed the lead back to six, and here come the Devils again. Well, this is a little inexperience on Hemmel's part because the only balls that Halverson has had good swings at are slow breaking balls down in the zone. They should be pounding him up in the zone, at least in or away, either one, and they've had success with him. But that was a bad pitch in that situation. Two men on, nobody out, and a long way to go in this one in the bottom of the seventh. Michael Collins got them started in earnest on the comeback trail with his grand slam in the second. Part of the five run, second inning. Quickly cut the deficit from eight zip to eight to five. Collins one for three today. And they have the top of the order coming up behind him. A bunt down the line. Munson lets it go foul. He's fortunate that he did not touch that. He tried to pick it up when it was in fair territory and he whiffed. And had he touched it, it would have been a hit for Collins and everybody would have been safe. Sean, I, I think you're exactly right. That's a great call. I think he fanned on the attempt. Right now, he should let that ball go. No, you uh, see, he, he pulled, pulled it up. Back. He pulled it back. Yeah, from here, it looked like he just missed it, but he realized at the last minute it was going to go foul. Yeah, we're right above them. So from our vantage point, it looked like he grabbed at it, but he did pull back. That was the correct play because he had no play, any base. 
Immel ahead of Collins, one strike the count. 22 runs in this game, a College World Series championship game record. ASU looking to add more. Collins, a push bunt toward first. Gore applies the tag to Collins. Try to slide under it. Still about 15 feet short of the bag. So Collins bunts for this team down by six. Obviously trying to bunt for a hit. Didn't get that job done, but they do have two in scoring position. This is not a bad play because, yeah, you're right. Even if he just gets the sacrifice, which he does, base hit, they're down by four, and you know, you load the bases up, you're one swing away from tying the game again. So Yes, we've we set a record for the amount of runs scored, but that's going to be broken again. There's Willie Bloomquist. One for four today, a second inning single. Mike Gillespie said they had to keep Bloomquist in. Steve Immel making his first appearance in the College World Series. He's allowed just one hit. There's another out of the reach of Ensberg. A base hit for Halverson. And here come the Sun Devils again. If you joined us late, they trailed eight to nothing after an inning and a half. And got to within nine to eight. They've never gotten quite even. But now the Trojans have pushed the lead back to six, and here come the Devils again. Well, this is a little inexperience on Hemmel's part because the only balls that Halverson has had good swings at are slow breaking balls down in the zone. They should be pounding him up in the zone, at least in or away, either one, and they've had success with him. But that was a bad pitch in that situation. Two men on, nobody out. And a long way to go in this one in the bottom of the seventh. Michael Collins got them started in earnest on the comeback trail with his grand slam in the second. Part of the five run, second inning. Quickly cut the deficit from eight zip to eight to five. Collins one for three today. And they have the top of the order coming up behind him. A bunt down the line. Munson lets it go foul. He's fortunate that he did not touch that. He tried to pick it up when it was in fair territory and he whiffed. And had he touched it, it would have been a hit for Collins and everybody would have been safe. Sean, I, I think you're exactly right. That's a great call. I think he fanned on the attempt. Right now, he should let that ball go. No, you uh, see, he pulled, pulled it up. He pulled it back. Yeah, from here, it looked like he just missed it, but he realized at the last minute it was going to go foul. Yeah, we're right above them. So from our vantage point, it looked like he grabbed at it, but he did pull back. That was the correct play because he had no play, any base. Immel ahead of Collins, one strike the count. 22 runs in this game, a College World Series championship game record. ASU looking to add more. Collins, a push bunt toward first. Gore applies the tag to Collins. Try to slide under it. Still about 15 feet short of the bag. So Collins bunts for this team down by six obviously trying to bunt for a hit didn't get that job done but they do have two in scoring position this is not a bad play because yeah you're right even if he just gets the sacrifice which he does base hit they're down by four and you know you load the bases up you're one swing away from tying the game again so yes we've we set a record for the amount of runs scored but that's going to be broken again there's Willie Bloomquist. One for four today, a second inning single. Mike Gillespie said they had to keep Bloomquist in check. He was the key for the offense of ASU, and they've done that. Bloomquist from Fort Orchard, Washington, near Tacoma, a sophomore. Has wanted to go to Arizona State since he was nine years old. Took a trip with his dad down to the ASU campus to visit older sister Melanie who was a student at ASU. They went to an ASU game and Bloomquist decided that day he wanted to play for the Sun Devils. And that wasn't necessarily a popular decision but around Seattle they wanted him to stay at home and play for the University of Washington. His dad went to Washington. His brother Joe was an outside linebacker four years earlier for the football Huskies. 
Chopper down to third. Ensberg booked the runner back and he throws Blomquist out. Big play. They get the second out without the run coming in. This is a textbook play by Ensberg. Gets a high chopper. See, he's playing in, so he gets a friendly hop. Looks the runner back to third. Makes an easy toss to first base. Textbook. Two outs. And it's up to Arguez to deliver. He's hitless today. Trying again to extend his hit streak to eight games. Little lob left field. Freitas charging hard. Can't get it. One run is in. Here comes the second run as the ball kicked away from Freitas. A two-run single by Rudy Arguez, and that's a big hit. It would have been a major downer for ASU had they not scored at all with two men in scoring position and one out. Now they chip away at the lead and get it back down to four. And Arguez has driven in five runs in the College World Series. Yeah, you hit it right on the head, head Sean. It, it would have been a real deflator momentum wise and that these two clubs I mean they they run on emotion you know in the big legs uh, it's pretty much an emotional game emotionless game but here it's not and so, so some of that emotion can drift from Southern Cal's dugout over to ASU so much the better for them big hit by Arguez here's Michael Moreno the number three hitter back to first is Arguez there's nine stolen bases this year. He's been thrown out five times. Freitas has just shipped it over this inning to left field. Rod Perry, who came in to run for Greg Hanoyan, has taken over as the center fielder. Freitas moved from center to left. He couldn't quite get underneath that shallow fly to left by Arguez. A strike on Moreno, all in one. Last game at ASU for Moreno, senior from Mesa, Arizona, drafted early this week by the Cubs in the 22nd round. Chad Murphy says they will likely try to make him into a middle infielder, probably a second baseman. And Moreno is going to give Pro Ball a shot. He's told us yesterday if that doesn't work out, he wants to be a coach. Coach Murphy quickly interjected, yes, he wants my job. <laughs> it's a tough job. Both coaches inherited. Fred both followed legends Rod Dato the winningest coach in the history of college baseball the late Jim Brock great coach at ASU and both coaches have measured up very well one of them will win his first national championship today line to center Perry on the move still going it's over his head and off the wall our glass being waved around. Rachels will run it back into the infield. It's a three-run game, 14 to 11, on a double by Michael Moreno. Sean, in this kind of situation, the outfield usually wants to play deeper so that they don't allow anything hit over their head. With a runner at first base, the only thing that's going to score them is a double or a triple. And in this case, Perry, who just came into the ball game for defensive purposes, should have been playing a little bit deeper. I mean, he does have great speed, and maybe uh, he's not used to being out there that often. But uh, you can't allow those kinds of things to happen in this kind of a ball game. So Immel might be tiring. As he mentioned, he hasn't pitched at all in the College World Series. He breezed through two and a third innings without allowing a hit. And he's given up three runs in this inning on four hits. And they will summon Mike Weibling from the bullpen. And they've just sent Jack Kropchek, their All American closer, down to start warming up. 14 to 11, USC in the seventh. Well, it seems every year we see this type of graphic, all kinds of records being set with runs scoring and home runs and attendance. They've set the attendance record this year, they've tied the record for batters hit. They've set the home run record and we're still going. LSU also set the individual team record with 17. And it was demonstrated once again that the seedings really don't mean anything because the three Florida schools highly seeded, went one and six. Well, here is Mike Weibling, a senior right handed pitcher, long reliever this year with a 2 0 record and one save. 
And he is making his second appearance of this College World Series. He pitched one inning without allowing a run. And he's in the face, the cleanup hitter, Andrew Beinbrink. He still has not had an official at bat today. He's walked three times at a sacrifice fly. He's scored a run, knocked in one. Moreno at second, two outs. One and one on Beinbrink. Even though Beinbrink's been on base three times, he remains the only ASU starter who does not have a hit. Big swing and a miss. One and two on Beinbrink. He's endured heartache within the last year. Last season is. Dad Jeff, a Navy captain, died of cancer. Andrew and his dad very close. His parents divorced when Andrew was very young. He was raised by his dad for the most part. Pat Murphy told us Jeff Feinbrink used to be at every game watching Andrew play. Coach Murphy says Andrew now is kind of the mother hen on the team. He's the guy who goes over to a teammate when he might be struggling and puts the arm around him and tries to convince him that everything's going to be okay. Moreno in second is just the opposite. He's the guy who'll jump in somebody's face. <laughs> Coach Murphy told us a story yesterday. Moreno was at the plate in the game early this year. Runner took off the to steal third. After the game, Moreno went up to him. Don't you ever try to steal third when I'm up there hitting. <laughs> and Michael uh, admits that his language can get a little bit spicy, but the players know not to take it personally. That he's just trying to, as he said yesterday, raise their awareness of some situations, which I thought was a very nice way of putting it. He's the enforcer. You have to have guys like that on the club too. They have, really have a unique club. I mean, they've got a little bit of everything. Of course, Beinbrick, he's got to follow Moreno because you don't want to have it the other way around. So you got to have the guy yell at the guy, and then the other guy said, No, that's okay, don't worry that's about right. it. Right. Good tandem. One yells at him, and the other guy brings him back up. Tying run in the on deck circle for Arizona State in the seventh. That's in a long way to right. The breeze bowling in that direction. We have a one run game again. An opposite field home run by Beinbrink. So well now every starter has a hit for ASU and Beinbrink has his team leading 12th home run of the year. Well, Wibley did his job initially, came in throwing strikes, but once Beinbrink hit that rocket down the third baseline, he should have known that uh, Beinbrink had his, his fastball timed pretty well. That's a pretty good pitch. This is outside. Off the plate a little bit, but Beinbrink, big and strong, just lifts it out, no problem. Well, it's 14 to 13. You almost want to look around for the place kicker to see if he's coming on for the extra point. Jeff Phelps, the batter. He lines one to right. Charging hard, Tice Hurst, and he makes the running catch at the knees to end the inning. So ASU trailed by eight and got within a run, then they fell behind by six. Now they're back within a run again. 14 to 13 after seven. The round of the day at Avenel belongs to Tommy Tolles. He's in second position, trailing only Fred Funk. This just a moment ago for par at the 15th hole. Preserves a spectacular day. He's five under for the day, just four off the lead. Coverage coming up shortly. Well, his teammates have gotten Chad Pennington within one run of the lead. Now it's vital that he keep them close. They've been fighting valiantly uphill all day long since USC scored eight runs in the first two innings to take an eight-nothing lead. Middle third of the order coming up for USC. Eric Munson drives one foul out of play to the left. We mentioned that Mike Gillespie said that Bloomquist was the key for the offense of ASU and they had neutralized him, which they have done. And Pat Murphy said Eric Munson's the best hitter in college baseball. We have to do a great job on him and 
They've done that today. He's one for four. There he goes, driving one to deep left. Galuki in that familiar spot in the corner, a foul ball. There's not going to be any left field line left by the time DeLuke gets done sliding across at every inning or so. I think that's going to be DeLuke's corner from now on. There he is. We've seen this three or four times already. He know that's a smart play right there. You can see he knows he's running out of real estate. So he puts on the brakes and slides into the fence instead of running into it with his body. Good thinking right there. They do use six umpires in the championship game. It's the 11th straight year that that's been the case. And Nick Zabelli, the left field line umpire, was right there to make the call. Munson down to third. Nice pickup by the third baseman, Beinbrink. We'll have an inning for yourself, Andrew. They had a shift on in the infield to shortstop Collins up the middle. Beinbrink playing way off the line and perfectly positioned as it turned out for Munson. Well, Munson can't catch a break. He has hit the ball sharply every time. That's a knuckleball. There we saw it. <laughs> and Beinbrick playing, really playing shortstop, makes a nice play as the ball comes up on him. Has plenty of time to make the play. Munson hitting in tough luck today. Morgan Ensberg is the batter. And what a day he's had. One for three. A single and a hit by pitch, but last inning he stole home. With that steal, he now has 20 stolen bases for the year to go with 21 home runs, and he becomes the first 2020 player in USC history in one season. 21 homers, 20 stolen bases for Morgan Ensberg, the senior. From Hermosa Beach, California, he sends it down the right field line. Moreno runs out of room. Sean, you touched on it. This is a real key inning for ASU because this is really the heart of the home run order for the Trojans, and they've already taken care of Munson. And Ticers has three during the College World Series, although he's in a cold streak now. But if they can come out of this inning unscathed, they're going to be looking really good. A little high and tight. Ensberg ducking out of the way. Well, Gillespie said Morgan Ensberg's had a very special year for us. He really picked up the slack during those 19 games when Eric Munson was out due to injury. He's barely alive after that pitch. Halverson held it there for an extra look from Dick Arunchi. And that's down and in. And Pennington was all around it. And he winds up walking Ensberg. Third walk given up by Pennington, who puts the inning in a third. Well, we know he can steal. That walk gets the bullpen going again for the Sun Devils, and they're going to buy a little time for Phil Lowry. He's been up several times already, a left hander. Throwing again in the bullpen. Halverson out to the mound to buy time for him. Brad Ticehurst waits. Ticehurst 0 for 4. The only starter on either team who has not reached base. Tonight on CBS, don't miss Dr. Quinn Medicine Woman, followed by early edition, then it's Walker, Texas Rangers. That's all coming up tonight on CBS. There's Phil Lowry, the lefty in the bullpen. The freshman Pennington pitches to Ticehurst. Alverson set up outside and the pitch was outside. Sean, I think if Tyser had remained hot, they would have made the switch and brought the left-hander in. But since he's such a cold hitter right now, they're willing to gamble that Pennington can get Tyser, the left-handed hitter, because right-handed hitter coming up, Jason Lane. And there's a strike on the corner, one and one. Southern California leads 14 to 13. In the top of the eighth inning. In this national championship game. Ginsburg back to first. Only Mark McGuire and Jeff Jenkins a bit more home runs at USC than Ensberg. 
He's not running. Tice Hurst, foul tip in the mid of Halverson. The ball and two strikes. Seats and left. Been an up and down year for the Trojans. The same is true of Halverson. He endured an 0 for 21 slump in midseason. The pitch goes through Halverson. Ensberg thought about third. Halverson gets it. He's talking about Tice Hurst, who's had an up and down season, including the 0 for 21 slump. Then he picked it right back up. One point at the end of the season, went 16 for 27. A very streaky hitter up there now. You can see Halverson, instead of trying to block the ball, tried to catch the ball, and his glove was actually in the wrong position. Should have been up the other way and just slide underneath that ball and try to block it. You can't afford, this is a one run ball game now. You can't afford uh, putting a, a runner in scoring position. The pass ball, the second of the day, charged to Halverson. Now a deep drive to right. Tice Hurst is out of this slump with a home run. Over everything in right field. Well, Pat Murphy made the decision to stay with Pennington to pitch to Tice Hurst. And he made it backfire with a mammoth home run to push the lead back to three. And you wonder how many times the Sun Devils can get up off the canvas. Great point, Sean. He rolled the dice and he and he got burned. He got burned. Here's the fastball right down Broadway. The, the pitch that Tysers has been having trouble with is the fastball above the belt. But this one is belt high. And that's the Tysers of two days ago. And that's what gives coaches and managers gray hairs. He got a left-hander pitcher warming up down there. He doesn't bring him in. Kapai Yao. Nice Hurst. Stepping the congratulations in the dugout. It's his fourth home run of the College World Series. And his first hit of the day. Foul ball off the bat of Jason Lane. He's one for four today. Guess what? <laughs> Tice Hurst with four home runs is tied a record <laughs> for homers in a College World Series, shared by four others: Bud Hollowell of USC back in 1963, Gary Heimel of LSU in '91, J.D. Drew of Florida State in '95, and Jeff Jenkins of USC also in '95. So you can add Brad Tice Hurst to that list. So he's been up and down, but he's provided some big blasts in this. College World Series for USC. There's a base hit. And freshman Pennington is getting knocked around. He'd been outstanding lately in regional and college World Series competition. An eight and a third inning scoreless streak coming in, but they've scored five runs against him today, and it seems that Pat Murphy has seen enough. Well, I believe there's another record set, uh, Sean, is this, this base hit by Jason Lane, I believe, ties the record for most hits during a College World Series. 14, set by Joe Caruso of Alabama last year as the Tide advanced to the championship game before losing to LSU. Let me thank Marty Aronoff, our crack statistician, for all the work that he has done today, keeping track of the records that have been tied and broken. The record for runs in a championship game was 13. LSU scored 13 last year. Oklahoma in 94. Both teams have scored 13 or more today. USC now with the record for runs in a championship game, and they lead by three in Omaha. Coming up next on CBS Sports third round coverage of the Kemper Open live from Potomac Maryland Fred Funk's lead now four shots Tommy Tolles making a move today he's the nine under par with one hole remaining three others five shots back of Funk the Kemper Open coming up next right here on CBS Sports here is the fourth pitcher of the ball game for Arizona State the junior left hander Phil Lowry. 
trying to keep it a three run deficit for ASU he's eight and six five point two two earned run average and he is a strikeout pitcher with ninety six and ninety eight and a third innings. Yeah, Lowry, he comes in here where he's got a very good fastball, got a very good curveball, and it throws an occasional change, but when he's a strikeout pitch, you're going to see a lot of hard stuff. There's a base hit on the first pitch thrown by Lowry. Jeremy Freitas, a single to left. Lane goes to second. And Freitas has four hits today. Seems like every time they bring in a left-hander to face Freitas, I mean, he just buries his right shoulder, says, I'm not giving an inch, and he gets a base hit. He really handles left handed pitches well. He's already scored three times and he's at first for Seth Davidson. He has two hits and a walk and he has scored three times. 18 hits now for the Trojans. Change up from Lowry missed. Lowry making his second appearance of this College World Series. He was the starter in their first game against Florida State, which was a wild ball game. ASU jumped out to a quick lead. They led eight to two, blew the lead. Florida State took a ten to eight lead before Arizona State came back with three runs in the seventh to win eleven to ten. Lowry in that game against the Seminoles lasted four and a third innings, gave up five runs on five hits and five walks. He struck out four. Florida State really helped the ASU cause in that game by making six errors. Two and all the count on the freshman Seth Davidson. Sean this ball game reminds me of a Rocky movie where he just keeps getting battered and then he comes back and he throws a million punches and then he gets battered again and comes back throws a million more punches. Well it's likely that ASU is going to have to counter punch very soon against one of the best closers in the nation Jack Kropchek first team All-American 2 1 pitch is low and it's three balls and a strike with Wes Rachel who's already five for five today on deck. Anticipation of the bat from Rachel's is working on one of the great days in the history of college baseball. Five for five today with seven runs batted in. He singled and scored in the first, did a three run homer in the second, singled to knock in another run in the third, doubled to drive in a run and he scored in the sixth, singled to knock in two more in the seventh. Five for five, three runs scored, seven runs batted in, and here he is with the bases loaded. We talked about Andrew Beinbrink, the loss of his dad, and it's a tragedy that Rachel's has endured recently, too. His dad died last year. He used to come to all of the SC home games, sit out there in the parking deck and right field and watch. He was confined to a wheelchair late in his life. Wes and his dad were very close. Rachel's came to USC as a walk on. Line to the second. Caught there by Bloomquist, a double play. Now Rachel's hit another bullet looking for his sixth hit of the ball game, but he finally ran out of good fortune as it's a double play that gets them out of the inning. Down by three, the Sun Devils. And here is tonight's winning Powerball number. <laughs> well, it started in the top of the first with a three run homer by Gore, and it hasn't stopped. Records being set all over the place. Mike Weibling now trying to keep the Trojans ahead by three. Krofchek is warming up as the bottom of the eighth begins. Bottom part of the order coming up 
for Arizona State Dustin DeLuke the number six hitter and Casey Myers and Greg Halverson DeLuke one for four today with a single he reached on a fielder's choice to knock on a run and scored back in the second. Weidling came in last inning immediately gave up a two run homer to Beinbrink the first battery face then he got Phelps on a line drive to left to end the inning. On the corner 0 and 2 to DeLuke. You know Sean even though we've had 29 runs scored it's been a well played game defensively. I mean they haven't given away runs. Well, just the one error. And that's the reason why Pat Murphy was not at all surprised that USC beat LSU yesterday and I was the two time defending national champions and we talked with Coach Murphy yesterday he said when we asked him do you have any preference who you'd rather play he said well I fully expect we're going to play USC because they're a better team better all around LSU had some efficiencies in fielding pitching USC a pretty solid all around club and Coach Murphy was well aware of that Skip Bertman said that too after yesterday's game he said USC should have won. They are a better team than we are right now. One two pitch in the dirt. And oh and two to two and two. Weibling and Deluki. Twenty nine runs scored in this game. Thirty two hits. He chased a soft one, a little bit low and away, too close to take certainly, and Deluki is out. This is what Weibling has to do. He has to change speeds. Here you can see that that ball's gripped way back in his palm. It's either a circle change or a palm ball, but you can see the action on it. Starts out over the middle of the plate, then just dives down and away. That's a great pitch. Really a tough pitch to distinguish as a hitter. Casey Myers the batter. He rips one deep to left down the line. That ball is gone. The freshman Casey Myers with his fourth hit of the game his first home run. And the Sun Devils trail by two 16 to 14. It's that two point conversion that he tried was successful is the difference in the game. Here's a pitch from Weibling. There's the same pitch that he just struck out the rookie on, but this one goes down and into the right handed hitter. That's a great pitch away from the left hand hitter. Not so good coming into the power zone of a right hand hitter. Well, these two teams have now combined for eight home runs. That's a championship game record for two teams combined. The home run for Myers was his eighth of the year. Still just one out. Greg Halverson. Two for four, two singles and two runs scored, with two strikeouts sandwiched in between. Sean, you talked about uh, USC's stopper and Jack Kropchuk. If he was a power pitcher, he'd be in the game right now, but he is not. Well hit ball, and it eats up the shortstop Davidson out in the shallow center. And Allison, who has not run well, wisely stops at first. Well, that was a smash. Hit at Davidson. Now the tying runs coming to the plate. And will Kropchek be summoned? Mike Gillespie's looking down to the bullpen now, wants to know if he's ready. He should be. Well, Halverson, every time they pitch him away and he can extend those long arms of his, he's hammered the ball. The point we're going to try, trying to make about Kropchek is, is his fastball clocks out about 81 and he throws changeups predominantly, just change up, change up, change up. And after you've seen him one time, the mystery is over and so coach Gillespie does not want to bring him in too soon and have a, a lot of looks with these ASU hitters but if he waits too long the game could be out of reach. Well plus Kropchek has pitched a lot in this College World Series. Made three appearances. Pitched five and two thirds innings. And here comes the pitching coach Savage. If it is a safe situation we could see the nation's Leading save man, and we will. Jack Krofcheck coming into the ball game. The 
tying run is once again at the plate for Arizona State with one out in the eighth inning in the national championship game. Jack Krofcheck, the new pitcher. 22 saves to lead the nation this year. Collins turned as if to bunt and looked at ball one. And as Fred Lynn mentioned a moment ago, for Krofcheck, it's slower and slowest. Collins has the grand slam today. Krofcheck's fastball generally in the very low 80s. But he throws a, an abundance of change ups that generally run up there in the low 70s. And Collins out ahead of that one. Even though you know it's going to be coming slowly, you're still out ahead of it. Sean, the best time to throw a change up is in a hitter's count. 1 and 0, oh, it's a hitter's count. You think you're going to get a fastball? No, I'm not. Collins, another push bunt toward first. He did that the last time up. And again, Gore tags him out. Well, that seems to me, Fred, to be a very odd play. It's got to be a guy who's demonstrated to get the ball out of the ballpark. Why are you giving up and out? The only reasoning could be that he's trying to push that ball out to second base and bunt for a base hit. And that because he is speedy. He just bunted it to the first baseman. If he bunts that ball 10 feet to the left, it's a hit. They have credited him with a sacrifice, although that seems to be very generous because. Uh, down by two, and being the time run at the plate, you generally wouldn't be up there sacrificing, especially with one out. You'd be up there trying to get a hit. That seemed to be Collins' intention. Well, Bloomquist has had a quiet day. He's been their MVP, according to the coach. He's the most dangerous player in the lineup, according to the opposing team's coach, Mike Gillespie of USC. But today he's one for five. One and one the count. And Krofcheck knows that these AS hitters know him too. So he's throwing a couple more fastballs here to say, hey guys, I do have a fastball. I can throw it once in a while. You just can't sit on my changeup. Tying run at the plate. Lindquist, not a great home run threat with four homers this year. Kemper open coming next. Fred Funk with a four shot lead on Tommy Tolls. Four others, five back. Here it's a two run lead for USC in the eighth inning. They led by eight. They led again by six after the lead was narrowed to one. But Arizona State keeps coming back. Now it's one and two on Bloomquist. And tremendous intrigue in this appearance for Krofcheck. He's from Scottsdale, Arizona, and grew up a big Arizona State. Sun Devil fan he used to attend the games when he was a little boy. Long twist, a big swing, and a little pop up out behind second base. Davidson stabs at it and makes the catch. And that ends the inning. The Sun Devils get one of a home run by Casey Myers. We head to the night, 16 to 14, Southern California. Sixteen to fourteen USC heading to the ninth. This is the fourteenth game of this year's College World Series and it's the fifth time in fourteen games that both teams have scored ten runs or more. There have now been sixty one homers in this College World Series thirteen more than the old record. And here's Rod Perry Junior up for the first time today came in as a pinch runner in the seventh. Rod's hitting 239 for the year, 22 hits and 92 at bats. And he's one for three here at the College World Series. First pitch from Phil Lowry is a ball. Kemper open, third round coverage coming up next for you golf fans tuning in. We'll get you there just as quickly as we can. Here we are still the crown of national champion. Harry took ball two. Batters two, three, and four against Lowry. Rod Perry, Rob Gore, and Eric Munson. Oh. Now 
Lowry came in last inning gave up a single and a walk but then got the double play ball. And the line drive to second that got them out of the inning. Chad Pennington pitched an inning in the third gave up five earned runs and five hits and three walks. Two and two the count now with Perry. player who's come to the plate today for USC has had a hit. Here are the records set today. Runs by one team, runs by two teams, hits by one team, and by two teams, homers by two teams, many individual records that we've chronicled for you throughout the afternoon. And perhaps still more to come. Rob Gore has a chance right now. No player has ever hit three homers in the championship game. He takes a strike. Gore homered in his first two at bats. Picked up a sacrifice fly in the sixth inning. Has knocked in five runs, which shared the championship game record until Wes Rachel's collected his sixth and seventh runs batted in of this game. He jammed them, popped up right at the mound. Lowry battling the sun, the first baseman, and the third baseman collide. They have a play at second, and they make it. Collins the shortstop coolly picked the ball up and threw to Bloomquist for the out. But now Phelps the first baseman is injured. He got tangled up with the third baseman Beinbrink. Pitcher looked to be having a very difficult time finding the ball and ordinarily if another fielder can take it he does. But Beinbrink and Phelps collided and they're tending to Phelps. And normally in this situation you want a position player to handle the ball and the pitcher's job is to call off. His job is to say first base first base first base or third base third base. He's the captain. He's got to be directing traffic so that this situation doesn't occur. They were fortunate that the ball stayed close by and they were able to get the force out at second. This should not happen. The pitcher's got to take charge here. No, I think he was just so determined to get out of the way. He really didn't know which way to go. There's the collision. It looked like a leg injury to Phelps. You could see that his legs were bending awkwardly as he went stumbling off the side of the mound. He's okay. He'll stay in. Gore safe at first on a fielder's choice with one out. Actually, Sean, the USC catches a break because Gore is a more experienced player. And he's at first base now, even though the Perry probably has more flat speed. Gore has more game time experience. Munson hits a bullet through the left side. The shortstop Collins was playing up the middle. That left a big hole on the left, and Munson found it. So Munson has his second hit. He's two for six. And very important that Lowry stopped this rally right here from the ASU point of view. This is just about the spot where Beinbrink picked him last time, but there was no runner on first base, and they could utilize the shift. This time they had to play honest. And he found the hole. Morgan Ensberg. We talked with him a week ago prior to last week's game with LSU. He said this season has been an absolute fantasy for me. Well, it's become even better today. Ah! Including a steal of home by Ensberg back in the seventh inning. Been on base three times. Single a walk and a hit by pitch. He has scored twice. He said last week it's the best season I've had since you know you're about nine years old. You hit a home run just about every time up. You can steal a base whenever you want. Then if you make it out, you go back to the bench and cry. <laughs> <laughs> he loves baseball. He played in the Cape Cod League last summer, a very prestigious league. Top collegians play. They use the wooden bat there. He had a great experience on Cape Cod, as you might expect. On the way home, he decided he had enough baseball, so he went to Kansas and played in the league there for a couple of weeks in August. That's what you call barnstorming across the country. Mm -hmm. 
Never quite gets sated. You just keep on going. Well, there's another leg. Yeah, I'll go over there for a while. This fan group barnstorms around the country. His mom and dad make it to just about every game, as do his grandparents, Keith and Bernice Olviet. Two one from Lowry. A bullet. That's a fair ball out of the reach of Beinbrink. Go around to score. Munson stops at third. It's a double. And the fantasy continues from Oregon Ensberg. Morgan Ensberg has tried to pull the ball pretty much all day long, with the exception of last at bat. This ball is right down the middle. And for a pull hitter, a right handed pull hitter coming off a left handed pitcher, this is the ball that he wants to see. In this situation, he's trying to drive the ball. Fortunately for ASU, he hit the ball on the ground and not up in the air. 37 hits now by these two teams. That ties the record for most hits in any college World Series game. It's already the championship game record, but they've also tied for any CWS game. Arizona State versus Oklahoma State in 1984. They combined for 37 hits. ASU had 23 of them. They're going to intentionally walk Brad Ticehurst to load the bases, set up a double play possibility, and force at home. And they'll pitch to Jason Lane, who's already tied the record for hits by an individual in a College World Series. And it might be a pitching change as well, as they've had a right hander Chuck Crumpton warming up in the bullpen. Well, Coach Tyser Murphy's not going to make the same mistake twice, that's for sure, with Ticers. He said, I had an open base. I'm going to make a pitching change, and Ticers, I'm not letting you beat me again. Murphy heads for the mound. Right handed hitting lane due up, and there will be a pitching change. Chuck Crumpton will be the fifth pitcher of the ball game for Arizona State. USC leads by three, and they're trying to add to that lead in the ninth. Now, the tenth pitcher in this game is Chuck Crumpton, the right hander. And you're right. Ten pitchers used in the championship game is the championship game record. <laughs> Five for each team. Now Bruce Snyder, the football coach at ASU, was expected to attend this game with Rob Evans, the new basketball coach. Wonder if uh, Coach Snyder brought his field goal kicker with him. They might need the field goal to tie it. They hope that's all they need because Crumpton's into a bases loaded spot with one out. And as you look at his numbers. We'll move from Crumpton's line to the leaderboard at the Kemper Open third round action. Ongoing Fred Funk. Eating up the course in Potomac Maryland. Now 14 under two under on his third round today. And with a five shot lead over three others Tommy Tolles Clark Dennis and Stuart Appleby and the golf action is coming up next right here on CBS Sports. Bases are full Eric Munson the Trojan at third. Morgan Ensberg at second. Brad Ticehurst was just intentionally walked as a third. ASU has trailed all day. Fell behind 3 0 after a half inning, 8 0 after an inning and a half. They've never gotten even. They got to within 9 to 8, then the deficit grew back to 6. And they narrowed the gap back down again. But now it's 3, and perhaps growing as Lane steps in. 14 hits of the College World Series. That's tied the record. Chance to set the record all by himself in this at bat. He's two for five today. He takes a strike on the outside corner from Crumpton. Well, what we're going to see from Crumpton is, uh, you know, he doesn't have one pitch that's anything that's outstanding, but he mixes his pitches up well. Fastball, slider, change. Well, he wants that double play ground ball right now. Lane was swinging for the downs there. Crumpton's a junior. Junior college transfer. He's from Mesquite, Texas. Lane hits it high in the air and deep in center field. Arguez leads. He can't get it. Jason Lane. 
game sets the College World Series record for hits in a World Series with a grand slam for USC, his 15th hit. And the Trojans lead is now a touchdown, 21 to 14. Sean, this is the kind of blast we saw all last week. There's a hanging breaking ball. And this ball just kept carrying. Unlike a lot of the balls hit earlier in this game, this ball kept going and never slowed down. It looked like it was in the park, in the park. No. Fifteen hits. Four of them homers. Fifteen hits a record by himself. Four homers ties the College World Series. Brad Tyser is his teammate. Tied that record, the homer record earlier today. Jason Lane, junior, another junior college transfer. Last year he was at Santa Rosa Junior College, where he's the Northern California JC Player of the Year. With a lot less fanfare than he is receiving now. He had two homers yesterday against LSU and closed out the game with an inning of third of scoreless pitching. And that grand slam had them erupting in the dugout each team has hit a slam today Freitas sends one through the middle of base hit that is his fifth hit of the ball game that must be a record most guys with five hits in one game <laughs> Freitas is going to be lifted for a pinch runner Lane still accepting the congratulations in the dugout. Freitas leaves after his fifth hit. 23 hits now for USC. That ties the record for a College World Series game by one team in any game, not just the championship game. Arizona State has that record. They had done it twice in 84 and 88 against Oklahoma State and Wichita State, respectively. Jeff DePippo is the pinch runner. Mike Gillespie being the classy guy that he is getting the Pippo into the championship game get his name into the box score he's been a contributor throughout the year backup catcher he's at second now as Davidson grounds out well if ASU has one more rally it's going to have to be a big one they don't need coach Snyder's field goal kicker anymore they need Jake the snake to come back <laughs> and lead one more last minute drive for the Sun Devils. Here's Wes Rachels bidding for his sixth hit of the game. Five or six, and the only out he made was last inning on a line drive to second with the bases loaded that wound up as a double play. He's driven in seven runs today. Checks his swing and takes a ball. 35 runs by these two teams combined. Ties the College World Series record for any game. They've already set the championship game record, but 35 runs the record in any game at the CWS, ASU, and Oklahoma State in 1984. The game won by the Sun Devils 23 to 12. drives one to center. That one will stay in the yard. Handled by Arguez to end the inning. Jason Lane putting the finishing touches on a memorable College World Series. A grand slam and USC now leads by seven as we head to the bottom of the ninth the national championship game in Omaha. USC three outs away from the 12th national championship in school history. The first in 20 years. And ASU needs to mount another spirited comeback against the best closer in the nation this year, Jack Kofchek. His first pitch, a strike to Rudy Arguez. Arguez, Michael Moreno, and Andrew Beinbrink, hitters two, three, and four do up. They have the batters up there they'd like to have up there. Jack. 
off speed pitch as most of them are. And Croft checks ahead one and two. Well, with all the records being set today that are College World Series records, Kravchek has a chance to set two national records. With 22 saves this year, he's already tied the national record set by Scott Wright of Cal State Fullerton in 1984. And Kravchek has 48 career saves. That's tied all time with Tim Hickox of Stetson, pitched in the late 80s and the early 90s. Arguez out on the fly ball to Rod Perry in center, and they're two outs away from another national title. Well, we posed the question last week, was it possible that it could happen again? 1948, Kentucky won its first national title in basketball. Michigan won its first in men's ice hockey. USC won its first in baseball. This year, 50 years later, Kentucky again won the basketball championship. Michigan won the ice hockey championship. And now USC kind of complete the trifecta and the 50th anniversary of their first championship in baseball. Kismet. Karma. Michael Moreno the batter one and one the count he's two for five today a single a double two runs scored a stolen base and a run batted in in his last game for ASU. Oh. Two balls one strike. There's the guy who undoubtedly is going to be the. MVP of this College World Series, Jason Lane, although certainly Rachel's today and Gore gave him a run for his money, but with what Lane has done throughout the College World Series, offensively and with his pitching, he has to be. We are just guessing, of course, but we need an investigation if he's not. I think that's a pretty good guess. He would get my vote, that's for sure. Well hit ball foul out of the reach of the diving Innsberg. Well, years ending and eights have been great to USC baseball too. We mentioned their first championship in 48. They also won the baseball championship in 58, 68, and 78. 78, the last time they won one. And Kentucky also won the basketball crown in 58 and 78. Now they are one out away from a national championship. Jack Kropchak, who grew up a Sun Devil fan. Watching the games there as a young boy wanted to pitch there but wasn't recruited. Came as a walk on to USC. And during his red shirt year earned the attention of the coaches by pitching well in batting practice. Now here he is about to set records for closers in college baseball and finish off the title hopes of the team he grew up dreaming about playing for. You know, Sean, there is a closer in the big leagues like him, and it's Doug Jones, so mm -hmm. it can be done. Check was drafted earlier this week in the 25th round by the Brewers. The team that Doug Jones has pitched for. Feinbrink sends it to left, not deep enough. USC! Wins the national championship in college baseball for the 12th time. Southern California with 21 runs on 23 hits in one area. They left seven. ASU 14 runs, 16 hits in no errors. They left eight. Let's go down to the field. Here's Andrea Joyce. All right. All right. Thanks, Sean. Coach Mike Gillespie, congratulations. You had to battle your way through the loser's bracket. Three wins in three days. How much more special does that make this championship? Uh, we, we, it couldn't be more special. Uh, I, I, I can't express how proud we are of our guys. I think they just did a tremendous job and 
Um, I'm sort of uh, speechless. I'm sorry, but boy, are we are we ever thrilled with our kids. Congratulations Thank again. You. All right, back to you, Sean. The tearful Mike Gillespie, particularly thrilled with Jason Lane, who not only set the record in this College World Series for hits and earned the record with a grand slam to provide the final margin, but he also was the winning pitcher today. Now for Fred Lynn and Andrea Joyce, Sean McDonough saying so long from Omaha, where USC has defeated Arizona State 21 to 14. The Trojans are the national champions. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports. Golf is next.